the window today is the top-ranked passer in the country, Charlie Ward. But Virginia's Simeon Willis, a Cavalier leader, looking for an upset of number one. The Cavaliers of Virginia off to another 5-0 start in 1993. To get win number six will be a tough task in Tallahassee, Florida. It's a battle to ACC supremacy. As you take a look at the standings, Florida State atop the heap. Virginia with a 3-0 mark. North Carolina has beaten Georgia Tech today. Clemson lost to Wake Forest. That's how the top four look in the ACC. And hi, everybody. I'm Brad Nestle with Gary Danielson. Welcome to Tallahassee, a battle of unbeaten. The ACC crowns on the line. Should see some offense today, Gary. We've got the number one quarterback in the ACC, tops in the country in passing efficiency. As coaches say, poised, unflappable, all of that. Sounds like a lot, but that's the other guy. He's going to be the trophy <laughs> candidate, Charlie Ward. But some late breaking news about Charlie Ward. He has not practiced this week. Jerry Punch will update you on how he practices his game. But speaking of Simeon Willis, he can do it all. He has to take the crowd out of the game and play his game. He gets off to a good start. I think he will have a good football game. 183, his passing rating. Tops in the country. 13 touchdowns and only three interceptions. A lot of people think if you're going to catch Florida State, do it this week. They had the high, the emotional rise against Miami for the victory last week. And for Virginia, they're coming in off and off week. The brand news, and, and how should I put this? You know, if you're going to play the Augusta National Golf Course, you don't get ready by playing Arnold Palmer Miniature Golf, and that's about what Virginia has done. They played Ohio University a week ago, but to win this football game, their offense is going to have to come through. They're going to have to score points, but most importantly, their offense is going to have to shut out Florida State's defense. They haven't scored as much as their opponent. But when they get inside the 20, that's the key stat in this football game. As you can see, Virginia has been very effective 18 possessions, 15 touchdowns, but Florida State just doesn't let anyone score inside there, and you don't get there very often. Interesting game. George Welsh has said his team has not been tested. Will they ever be tested today, though? The number one team in the country, the Seminoles of Florida State, off to a 6-0 start. They try to make it number seven against 15th-ranked Virginia when we come back. Stadium already rocking for number one against number 15. We talked about the top two stars for the Seminoles that have question marks next to their names due to injuries. Dr. Jerry Punch, the third member of our broadcast crew, has more on the sidelines. Doc. Thank you very much, Brad, and hello, everyone. You know, it's been pretty much common knowledge that junior outside linebacker Derek Books probably wouldn't play the Buckus and Lombardi Award candidate, has a compressed nerve in his neck, and even if he does play, he won't be 100%. But the best-kept secret right here in Tallahassee, Charlie Ward has not practiced in three days. In fact, if it weren't for athletic trainer Randy Orovitz over here behind me, Ward probably wouldn't be playing today. Orovitz diagnosed a tendonitis in Ward's throwing arm on Tuesday. They have been treating him aggressively, ultrasound, electrical stimulation, trying to get him back ready to play. Now, he will play today, but the big question marks, for how long and how well? Coach Bobby Bowden, about 70,000 people here in Dope Campbell, and you at home will find out simultaneously if the treatment works. Fred? Bobby Bowden today would move into a tie for sixth place all time in coaching victories with Bo Schembechler if he gets number 234 here this afternoon. His counterpart on the Virginia sideline. What a marvelous job he's done. In his 12th season, George Welsh at Virginia and his team again off to a 5-0 mark as they were a year ago. They climbed as high as 10th in the country last year. Virginia won the toss, deferred, so Virginia will kick. And Florida State has only seven kickoff returns all year. Think about that. Being a kickoff return man for the Seminoles is like being the team barber for the Philadelphia <laughs> Phillies, you know? You just don't get a lot of work. When you don't give up points, you don't tend to have the opposition kick off very often. And they might not get one here. I, I would be surprised if Virginia kicked it all the way downfield. I look for a high pooch punt around the 20-yard line. Kyle Kirkati will kick for the Cavaliers. 3-0 in conference play. Florida State unbeaten, coming off the big victory over Miami, and 4-0, and and the defending Atlantic Coast Conference champions. Short. Taken on the fly at the 20. And 
excellent field position to start the opening drive as Riley takes it to the 32-yard line. We take a look at our McDonald's starting lineup for the Seminoles of Florida State. Sean Jackson, top rusher, four touchdowns on the ground, one receiving with Floyd and Ward in the backfield. Lonnie Johnson doesn't get a lot of credit. Eight catches, but he's got three touchdowns at tight end with Knox and Pryor, the wideouts. Up front, maybe the most underrated lineman in the country, says Bobby Bowden, is Clay Shiver. With Laureano, Tyre, McNeil, and Connolly. And it's first down for Charlie Ward and Florida State. They'll work from the 32-yard line. And they give it to Jackson, maybe a yard. That's about all against a tough Virginia defense. Virginia defensively, Mike Frederick leads the team in sacks. They'll need him to pressure Ward today with Keel, Krishbaum, and McKeska. In the linebacking core, Jamie Sharper. A youngster gets a start instead of P.J. Killian with Neal and Burns. Keith Lyle leads the team in tackles in the secondary and in interceptions with McClellan, London, and Smith. About a second and eight, Florida State. And Ward's first throw is true. Jackson in the flat. Went down to a knee. Lost the ball. I think it was blown dead, though. His knee appeared to touch down at the 33-yard line. Greg McClellan, Tom Burns came in there, made the first hit. A couple of points early here, Brad. First of all, watching Charlie Ward in warm-ups, he did not have a lot of zip on the football. He was throwing the ball low onto the outside, and that is reminiscent of a bad elbow. I felt it before. <laughs> they need the running game to get going. I look for a little more eye formation in this football game. You see Charlie, 70%, 13 touchdowns, only one interception. It appears he would have to throw here on third down and eight. Florida State, 54% of the year, their third down conversions. Ward throws short in and out of the hands of Tamaric Vanover. And that's really the defensive game plan that Virginia wants to position the Florida State offense into. Keep Charlie Ward in the pocket, number one, and make the throws happen in front of them. The key stat in this football game defensively, tackles or yards after the catch. If they can tackle them, they should be successful. Sean Liss, just under 40 a kick. And Larry Holmes will drop back deep. A dangerous return man and wide receiver for the Cavaliers. End over end punt. Might be able to handle it. Now he's going to clear out. And this one takes a Florida State bounce down near the 23-yard line. 43-yard kick. And Virginia will take the field offensively. Here's how they look. Charles Way leads the way. Five touchdowns rushing. A 240-pounder with Simeon Willis and Jared Washington. Tyrone Davis, over 20 a catch and four scores with Allen and Mundy as the tight end. Mark Dixon, they liken him to Jim Dombrowski and Ray Roberts when they play their position so well on the offensive line with Reed, Heath, Collins, and Slocum up front for the Cavaliers on a first down from the 23-yard line. And there he is. He's alone, and he's still on his way all the way out to the 39-yard line. 16 yards. <laughs> he looked like a buffalo. Got a first down for Virginia. Florida State's defense will get a wake-up call right there. Up front. Game plan going into this game. Run the ball between the tackles. Virginia does not feel they have the outside speed. If the fullback is successful, that'll take a lot of pressure off Simeon Willis. First down, the 39-yard line. of Florida State all over that one, led by Derek Alexander. Best pass rusher they have with Nance at the nose and McIntosh, the other defensive end. Junior Eric Smith will try to fill Derek Brooks' huge shoes on defense with Rebol Alexander and Roberson. And Devin Bush, for all practical purposes, put that Miami game away last week with his 40-yard interception for a touchdown. Joined Sawyer, Coes, and Abraham in another very gifted Florida State secondary. Second down, nine. Cavaliers just outside their own 40 on their opening offensive drive. Willis from the shotgun. Overshoot his intended receiver. Tyrone Davis. Nice coverage. One of the goals for the Virginia offense is try to keep the Florida State defense, their nickel defense, off the field. And these third and long situations are something, especially early in the game, I don't think they're going to put a lot of pressure on Simeon Willis. Bush broke up the last play. A strong safety. And Willis gets the play from the bench in the person of Larry Holmes. 
Brad, when we talked to all the coaches, both uh, Coach Welsh and uh, Bobby Bowden, they were impressed uh, with the accuracy of Simeon Welsh. Got a timeout, Virginia. With 12 minutes, 13 seconds to go, first quarter. We'll take a timeout as well. Scoreless early. In Tallahassee, early, no score. And a third down situation for Simeon Willis on the Cavaliers offense. Time runs out, so does Willis. He's not going to get the first down. Out to the 45 will leave him about four yards short. Clifton Abraham made the tackle. <laughs> he and Willis have a little chat, and it'll be a punting situation for the Cavaliers. I don't think you're going to see any backup in Simeon Willis. He, he is a very competitive, and all the coaches just talk, the Virginia coaches, and he is just simply unflappable out there. Will Bryce, number two kicker, putter that is, in the Atlantic Coast Conference, and Corey Sawyer over seven per return back for the Seminoles oh what a kick all the way to the end zone and a mile high to boot 55 yard punt but it will come out to the 20 yeah. 55 yard punt and he goes goes to the bench he gets chewed out we, we went we needed a 53 yard <laughs> okay we on Willis who won the quarterback derby earlier in the year as they really didn't know who was going to take that spot fourth straight year virginia's had a different starting quarterback and the fourth straight year that quarterback has led the acc in passing efficiency it speaks pretty well of your quarterback coach and your head coach and your system i think first down danny cannell is in at quarterback for florida state it's a screen pass marquette smith maybe got four yards as we go to mike Tirico. mike Speaking of quarterbacks, Brad, Heath Schuler now has the Tennessee record for most touchdown passes in a season. Here's number 19 against the Blitz to Craig Faulkner from 25 yards out. Tennessee leads Bama by four in the ACC NC State rallies to beat Marshall by seven, Brad. And Heath Schuler just keeps on tossing them. Just four minutes gone in this one, and Charlie Ward back in at quarterback now. Charlie gets leveled back at the 12-yard line. Mike Frederick, we said he'd be the guy that would have to apply pressure, and that's about all the pressure you want on a guy with a bad wing. I, I do not think any of these naked bootlegs is going to work against Virginia. You know all eyes are going to be on Charlie Ward. No matter who he fakes to, someone will be assigned to that naked-type play. Bedrick's coming in on block. They expect him to bite on it. That's not going to work. Talking to Bobby Bowden, he said, I don't like this play for him. He might have to call Mike Rick on that one. Quarterback coach. Loss of 10. Third down, 14. Florida State. Ward took another big shot, but he got the ball to Tamari Vanover, and we'll see you tomorrow. Touchdown, Seminole, 86 yards. of Charlie Ward's career, and he took a lick to deliver it. Well, I think anybody would take a lick for an 86-yard touchdown pass. He got hit from the side, but the ball was long gone, and he knew he had it. It was a zone defense, and for Greg McClellan, number 11, the left corner, to get beat in a zone third and long, that's really unconscionable. Bentley, good on the point after. Bad elbow and all. Ward to Vanover. Knowles by seven. Charlie Ward, 86 yards to Tamarick Vanover. A three-play drive, a little over a minute for a touchdown, and here it was. Yeah, Brad, third and 14. Here's Vanover over here, and here's the safety and the corner. There's a miscommunication between these two guys. I don't know if it's a roll-up zone, a double zone, but between McClellan and Lyle, number 25, nobody covers. You can hold it right there. Here's the open field right out here. There should be somebody in this area if you're playing zone defense. That's a very easy throw on third and 14. Quarterback eyes have to light up on that one, but you're throwing to your best receiver, your big play guy, and no one has the deep third. 
receiver has been waiting for a big play like that as he's seen more double coverage and those types of things this year than last year as a freshman but boy he just blew by everybody and Brad you know it really wasn't a sharply thrown football either it had a wobble when you have a bad elbow you don't get the tight spiral on the throws Scott Bentley will kick Tyrone Davis and the two to the 17 and that's it Bernard Wilson made a stop on a special team. So Virginia takes the field for the second time. There's Derek Brooks, who we do not expect to play today due to that cervical burner that he's suffering from. Yeah, and, and why do I get the feeling that if uh, this was Notre Dame, he, <laughs> he may be running out on that field? I agree with you. Eric Smith in there in his stead. First and ten, Virginia. It's on 18-yard line. Oh, Smith on the outside where Brooks would be. Swing out of Willis trying to move his tight end, and now there's motion on the left tackle. Jim Reed to make it first and 15. I don't think anything upsets a coach more than to have a team come off the field on first down and not know the formation. Jim Knight, our referee. trademark of uh, Coach Welsh's football teams is ball that they foul, do not ball start, offense, first down. They do not beat themselves and those are the type of long yard situations. Now it's first first and 15 and Florida State has a much bigger package when they're in their nickel and they're going to force them into your nickel with those types of mistakes. Kevin Brooks Maybe a yard. Eric Smith said hello there. It'll be second down and long. Smith, a six-foot junior. He played behind Brooks a year ago. Brad, look what they're trying to accomplish. Virginia moves one guy over here. Florida State moves six guys on the opposite side because of Strong. Watch all the people flop around on this thing. That's a lot of movement, and that's what they're trying to accomplish. Second down at 14. Willis rolls and throws one in the ground intended for Demetrius Allen. And it's not the kind of start that Simeon Willis wanted. You've got to watch out for that guy. Sawyer will take one in the other direction on you on the coverage. A junior out of Key West in a long line of great Florida State cornerbacks. He's another one. But you have to have a, a, a lot of confidence in yourself to throw when you're backed up like this. You can feel those goalposts behind you, believe me. You know one mistake and they change the scoreboard against you. Three wide outs for Willis. He'll work from the gun. And third down at 14. Here comes a blitz. Screen. But red beautiful. And Ken Alexander with a big play and a big hit at the nine-yard line. <laughs> safe call. I don't know if you can beat Florida State with safe calls. We're going to see Rebo coming from the outside. He's on block the busted assignment. Ken Alexander does his assignment. He stays home. You know, you give a lot of credit to this Florida State team about being fast and big, but they're also well coached and they're in the right spot. Florida State, a great special teams unit as well. Last time it was a 55-yard kick. This time it's going to go out of bounds right near midfield, only a 40-yarder in Florida State. Great field position on offense after we check in with Mike Tirico. Michael. Brad to the Pac-10 where this is Washington's only trip into the Rose Bowl. They're playing UCLA. Wayne Cook backed up to J.J. Stokes to spin. The defenders of the Huskies kind of get in each other's way, but would they have caught Stokes? His 10th receiving touchdown on the year. UCLA back in it, now trailing by eight at the quarter. Stoking, huh? Wow. <laughs> 8.38 left here, first quarter. Florida State by seven. Canal at quarterback again. Throws over the middle. Lonnie Johnson, the big tight end. Broke a tackle, lost the ball. And let's see who's got it. Well, I'll tell you, Virginia thought they had all over that, and Florida State comes back up with that football. It hit a Virginia player, I think, it hit right somebody's in the chest. knee or something. Yes, you're right. So fortunate for Florida State that they didn't lose it there. Cannell comes in off, off the bench like the designated bunter. He comes in and throws a short little screen or a pass. Let's see, you see it bounce right there. Comes off. 
I don't know exactly who had it right there, but he had it in his mitts. Comes out. Randy Neal had a shot at it, but he just didn't come up with it. Charlie Ward back in at the controls. Counter play. Sean Jackson, a whole batch of field in front. Inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. 14 yards before Keith Lyle could catch up with it. You have big plays passing the ball against the blitz. You also have big plays running the ball against the blitz if you tie them up. Florida State against the blitz from Virginia that time. Breaks outside. Jackson sees it, and you only have people covering receivers in the secondary. That's why you get a big running play. I think so much for Florida State not being mentally ready for the game, huh? Yeah. Too many guys want to be make big plays in this football team. A lot of talent. They moved it to the Virginia 22-yard line. Jackson this time, not much. Back to the line of scrimmage where Mark Krishbaum made the tackle. John Jackson, the leading rusher coming into this one for Florida State. And a 98-yard game a week ago, including a 69-yard touchdown romp. No gain on the last play for Sean. Will be second down at 10. Seven minutes, 10 seconds left first quarter. They just joined us, Florida State leading 7-0 on a long Charlie Ward to Mark Vanover touchdown pass. Jackson found a hole in the middle this time and got to the 15-yard line, short of the first down by a couple. Killing it in on the tackle. Kind of got a kick out of talking to Bobby Bowden yesterday. It's always fun to talk to him, but he said, you know, I, I watched the films when we were back in that I formation. It's kind of boring yeah. watching it. You know, I, I like the fast break offense. That's why we feature it more and more. But I'll tell you, to have two weapons, the fast break and the I formation running in, quite an offense. Third down at two. And Ward from the shotgun at the 15-yard line. Now they drop back into the eye. Gary talked about the fullback floor bangs his way to a first and goal. Randy Neal holding on for dear life with Chris Baum. There's another unsung uh, uh, type of football player, specialist on the football team. It's William Foy. He's got great intensity when he plays the game. Like all Florida State football players, uh, uh, running backs, he can catch the football and a great blocker. Florida State, State, excuse me, Brad, can call their entire offense from the line of scrimmage. What Charlie Ward is doing at the eight-yard line. Jackson is going to lose yardage. Nice job defensively. Chris Baum in on it, again, along with Frederick. Frederick's had a good start, but so many weapons on this team. When we talked to Rick Lance, Rick Lance, defensive coordinator for Virginia. He said, uh, "We asked him, what do you what do you look at when you see this team?" He says, "A lot of talent <laughs> and a lot of Charlie Ward to Tamar Vanover that time. Got it closer. Still going to bring up a third down and goal at the five yard line." This is when Ward is most dangerous. You have to assign a man to him. The quarterback draw is in the game plan. Also, the fake type of a sweep, and you'll keep it on a bootleg type play. You see him hand signal and call the plays to the wide receivers. Third and goal at the five. As you look right through the Virginia defense, to Charlie Ward from the shotgun. In the flat, man wide open is Jackson touchdown. Fifty-yard march, capped by another Charlie Ward touchdown pass. One of the things that Charlie Ward does so well, the backs get out of there because they're not afraid of sacking Charlie Ward. And if no one covers the back, if they drop in zone, he just gives them the football. Bentley. For the point after. Penalty marker on the extra point. And let's see what that's about. Offsides. 
inside Virginia. The point after will be good. And they'll put up point number 14 for Florida State. Offside defense on the point after attempt. It'll be assessed on the kickoff five yards. So Scott Bentley will get an extra five yards to kick off when we come back. The Seminoles on Charlie Ward's two touchdown passes lead 14-0. Sean Jackson from Charlie Ward, five yards and a touchdown, 14 to nothing, Seminoles. And Bentley, a busy kicker early. Holmes and Davis back deep. Davis from the five-yard line. And again, he has to plow ahead just to try to get to the 20. Let's take a look at the breakdown in this defense from behind here as he snaps the ball. You're going to see the wide receivers go deep and the fullback right to the left of Jones right here just flare out to the side. But watch the breakdown. If you can stop it right there, guys. Look at when you're playing zone defense, you can't have two linebackers together. You have to distribute them evenly across the field. That's the breakdown. Ward reads it, delivers it to his fullback, and that's pitch and catch for a touchdown. Charlie Ward, who knows his options out there, reads them quickly and always has somebody like Jackson out there in that flat. Has already thrown two touchdown passes today. Simeon Willis, deep middle, man wide open. Aaron Mundy, the tight end. And Virginia in Florida State territory all the way to the 36-yard line. 45 yards, Willis to Monday. Well, we were wondering when we were going to see the misdirection. Lee Corso in the pregame said that they're going to feature misdirection, and Tom O'Brien gave it a little bit of misdirection that time, and no one covered the tight end. When you're playing a very aggressive defense, watch these linebackers. They're all over the football. Everybody wants to be the hero now for this team. They smell blood, give them a little bit of a misdirection, and Monday is running in space. Hard not to miss a guy that wide open, Gary, but the coaches, both sides of this uh, field today, talk about the accuracy of Simeon Willis. And he put it right where his tight end could take it in stride and pick up big yardage from the shotgun, first down. That one knocked down at the last instant by Corey Sawyer. He's another good one. He said, no, don't come this way. And Corey St Sawyer that time read Simeon Willis. He waited, he waited, he held off as long as he could, and then when he started to deliver it, you're going to see the bottom of your screen right here. Watch, he gives him some space. He says, please throw to my man. Please throw to my man. I want a pickoff right here. Just like when you used to play in the streets. Throw it to him. I can get the interception. like Bobby Butler, Leroy Butler, Deion Sanders. The list goes on and on of the corners that have played here. <laughs> Sawyer, another Thorpe candidate in that type of mold. Yeah, you, you never get any interceptions if you cover them too close. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Kevin Brooks, out of the 30-yard line, or it's going to bring up third down at four. We talked to Coach, Coach Welsh about scoring. Would he take field goals in this game? He says, you know, we just cannot beat this football team kicking field goals. We need points. When we get down in scoring position, we have to come away with touchdowns. They got a man too many. Yeah, Brooks gonna... hustles off. Big third down. Willis overthrew his man. Just talked about his accuracy and Patrick Jeffers, his favorite receiver, was out there. But he had a little bit of heat on him and overthrew him. I'm surprised they didn't get called for an illegal substitution on that play. They had 12 men in the huddle and someone left late. When you're between the numbers and tw uh, 20 or 12 people leaves, it should be called illegal substitution. George Welsh, as Gary said, when we get down, we've got to get something out of it. Decides on fourth and four to go right here. in this situation. And their fans will let you know if the Cavaliers can get four yards. Deep ball for the home run, and he overshot his man. Incomplete, very close, intended for Tyrone Davis. You wonder if that was the primary man they needed to pick up a first down. You knew it was going to be man-to-man. -man. You'll see in the background, Davis is wide open, but behind him, Larry Holmes, number 20, was wide open for the first down in a much easier throw also. So the Seminoles take over on downs. Dan 
Danny Cannell again on first down. We'll trot with the team out to the huddle. I think they'll cross him up and let him throw long this time. We've had a screen and a delay to the tight end for Cannell. First and 10, Florida State up by 14 here in the first quarter. They toss it to Marquette Smith. Reverses his field. Picks up a block from Cannell and got to the 35. Let's go to Mike Tirico. All right, Brad, for the Big Ten, Bobby Hoying not in a quarterback on this series for Ohio State. It's Brett Powers. And on play action, he goes deep. How many deep balls has Joey Galloway caught this year? His second touchdown of the game, and Ohio State leads by 11 there. Auburn has taken a one-point lead at home in the fourth against Florida. You know, Brad, the, about the only time Joey Galloway catches deep passes is when they throw it to him. <laughs> That's one of the keys to doing <laughs> yeah. that, isn't it? Second down and five at the 35-yard line. Charlie Ward back in there. He'll toss it to the tailback. Warren Dunn. Dunn to the 40. Very close to a first down. And we'll go down to Jerry Punch. Doc. Gentlemen, for the third consecutive series, Florida State's running what they call their Kentucky Derby offense, where they bring in backup quarterback Danny Cannell and the entire second string offense for the first and ten. Their job is to get four yards. They run off the field. Charlie Ward and company comes back on the field with the first string offense. They snap the ball as quickly as possible. The idea, Kentucky Derby type. Run them to death, make the defense tired, and run up the points. That's okay. Back upstairs. Right now, Charlie Ward's at the post. On third down and one. Charlie comes back in now to the eye set, just inside the 40-yard line. Done outside, first down, hurdles a man, midfield, and then some. Give him about a dozen. Yeah, give him five more, too, because they have face mask on it. Third and inches, and they're going to run a wide pitch. Done just is so explosive. Had the great game against Miami a week ago, and uh, just such confidence calling the plays. You're going to see a five-yard penalty for face masks. You know, when you're trying to catch lightning right here, you grab on anything you can. It was inadvertent, but uh, as you can see, John Harris right there gets a five-yard penalty. Dunn is a guy Bobby Bowden said is causing other teams fits right now. A true freshman out of Baton Rouge. Uh-oh, we got a little bit of a problem here. Florida State is going into the huddle. And they must be tired. They're talking about what they're going to do well, later. I know the real reason is they want to sell some concessions out there. <laughs> Take a break, people. Yeah, you can't even breathe here between plays. At the 43-yard line, first down. Again, Dunn stays in there behind Floyd. And he'll get it and get it. The Tamari Vanover and everybody falls down. Vanover lost yardage back into his own territory. Mike Frederick has been causing some havoc yep. in that backfield right now. We talked to Rick Lance, defensive coordinator, yesterday again. He said, what we have to do is play assignment defense. Very similar to play an option team. Everyone stay at home. Do your own job. Don't get caught up in the emotions of the football game. Mike Frederick stayed at home. He made the play. Loss of 10 on the end around attempt. Second down, 20. Back at the 47-yard line. Final minute and 20 of the first quarter. Charlie Ward loads it. Deep middle. And it's a first down throw to Kez McCorvey. Needed 20, got 22. I think his arm is warming up. This is a defense that's becoming more and more popular in college football. What you're going to see is four people dropping four different ways right here in four deep zones. But what happens is there's only three linebackers to follow it up. Before he comes in there, a lot of holes to throw underneath. If you have patience, you can throw against that coverage. Really the only long yardage situation Florida State has found themselves in today. One was a third and 14. They got an 86-yard touchdown. That was second and 20. And they got 22 yards and a first down at the 32-yard line. Ward trying to throw a screen. Almost intercepted. And it's Ryan Keel who just about had the biggest play of his season. Rick Lance is going, those linemen just can't hold on. Again, do your job, stay at home, read your keys. This time Keel reads it, knows it's a screen, comes out, gets his mitt on it, and almost comes up with an interception. Vanover says catch. So does the official. I'll tell you, all this uh, modern technology against the Florida State offense of running replays just doesn't get it done too often. Does. They snap it off right away. Well, there's scores around the country. Louisville coming off their first loss last week, Illinois. 
their offense in year. And Minnesota beating Northwestern. Here it's 14-0 Florida State. And got a first down at the Virginia 20-yard line. Frederick's offside. Free play. They whistle it dead. Apparently. Now they do. They had not whistled it dead. Randy Neal comes in and levels Marquette Smith. But he's just doing his job. Fans are booing. But they did not whistle it dead. I may have said that, but I think they were kind of waiting for it. Take a look at the 25-second clock right there. there. That's not very useful in this game when Florida State has the ball. That's like uh, the shot clock for a Loyola Marymount a few years ago. Outside, <laughs> defense, line ball. They walk off five to the 15-yard line. Third penalty against the Cavaliers. First and five for Charlie Ward and his Seminoles. They give it off to Floyd. Cuts back against the grain and gets close to the seven-yard line, where it's going to be first and goal. That first and goal will have to wait as they'll switch ends. And the first 15 minutes has belonged to the number one team in the country. 15 minutes and 14 points. some more money from the old man, I guess. Well, one thing I know, I don't know about Lee Corso and his pull around Florida State. Those are end zone seats aren't very good. <laughs> Front row, but in the end zone. Well, it's a good spot right now because you're looking at your team seven yards away and up 14 as we start the second quarter. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and the good doctor, Jerry Punch. Dino's going to take a beating tonight. I'm going to have to watch that. The old Penn State routine fell. Penn State losing to Michigan today. So Michigan rebounds from their loss to Michigan State a week ago with a gigantic Big Ten victory. First and goal. How many times have we said that today? All out blitz coming from the Cavaliers. Yes. Floyd broke a tackle and got a yard, maybe two. He ran right into it, but bounced around it. It'll be second down. 245. And quite a team player. Last year he played some backup tight end at times just because they were thin in that area. Nothing thin about William. Cousin of another former Florida State standout, Victor Floyd, played here. I saw Charlie Ward look at his wrist to call the play that time. They just sent it in. You wonder if just the passes are on his wrist though. Tenth play of the drive. Second and goal, Florida State at the Cavaliers six-yard line. Charlie says, I think they're coming after me again. And he'll call a timeout as he's running out of time. He's got great awareness. You know, a, a lot of quarterbacks in that situation would panic. He still was aware of the clock and the blitz. The flag down in the corner of the end zone. He may not have gotten that timeout called in time. Like I said, he needs to be more aware <laughs> of the <laughs> <laughs> well, he tried. He's just going to back it up now and give him some help, some more room. Dead ball, five yards, delay of game. There is no charge timeout, only a penalty. Well, they get the timeout back. The penalty will back the football to the 11-yard line come two more wide receivers so you're going to see one running back and four wide receivers set Vanover's already caught one for a touchdown so is Sean Jackson this is the type of spot they were in really on their last drive when Ward dropped back to pass and always has Jackson or somebody out there in the flat as a safety valve this time it can't be Jackson because Marquette Smith is alone set back with it but a three wide out set on second and goal from the 11 yard line going to go to Marquette Smith the other way with the same play and Smith got it to the eight yard line sound defense that time everybody looking at the quarterback and keeping all the receivers with a little bit more room in front of them that time and coming up and making the tackle and you would think right now Virginia just praying that they can force a field goal attempt instead of giving up another touchdown Johnson the tight end and Floyd the fullback back in there third down and goal at the nine 
17-0 Florida State as they look to add more to that two-touchdown lead. Ward wants to throw a screen, throws it out to Smith in the flat, broke a couple of tackles and somehow worked his way to the six-yard line. Killian and Neal there to beat him, and they will force uh, Scott Bentley field goal attempt. Killian coming back from an injury. This is his first game back. Did not start the football game, but uh, one of their top linebackers and a very solid linebacker group for Virginia that time. Again, plenty of room, and that penalty, that delay of game penalty, really kept them out of the end zone, I think, that time. Scott Bentley, the highly touted freshman, has not been perfect this year, but he is six out of eight. He's going to try one here from 23 yards out on the left hash. And he's got it. Two and a half minutes into quarter number two, Florida State tacks three more onto the lead. Time. Stadium, a happy bunch. Renegades been a busy horse. Shows Chief Osceola as it's 17 0. Seminoles leading the Cavaliers of Virginia for supremacy in the ACC. George Welsh Cavaliers shut out so far. That last drive capped by the Bentley field goal. 64 yard march in 12 plays. Bentley will kick in Larry Holmes and Tyrone Davis back deep. So far, Holmes has not been able to get his hands on it. And he won't get this one either. And Virginia will not bring it out. Touchback, they'll work from their own 20-yard line as we go to Mike Tirico. Mike? Brad, two of the big three in the Big 8. Colorado at Oklahoma. Buffs up 13-0. Lamont Warren, he's going to throw just barely before his knee hit the ground. Charles Johnson already on his knees. What a great catch, great play. Bringing Oklahoma to their knees a bit. Alabama's now up two near halftime. That was a great <laughs> toss, huh? Just like they drew it up, huh? Yeah. Did you send McCarty that play? Or... <laughs> Simeon Willis, two out of seven passing so far today. And whoops, now he's two out of eight. Penalty marker down. We'll go to Jerry Punch. Jerry? Thank you, Brad. I'm with the former Cavalier and current Miami Dolphin, Dolphin rookie running back, Terry Kirby. And Terry, uh, if you're watching your Cavaliers play here, what do they have to do to get on track offensively? I think one thing right now, we just need to establish ourselves in a running game and then get together with the passing because it's going to open each other up. And right now, we just need to you know, stay positive and just focus right now. You play two sports in Virginia. You were basketball and football. So who better to assess how tough is it for Charlie Ward to excel in two sports at this level? Uh, it can be done. I think he has the capability of doing it. And, you know, being a quarterback is not as hard as being a running back on you. And, you know, he's been able to do it. He's been successful so far. So why not keep doing it? Big loss for the Dolphins. Uh, Dan Marino came out last week with an Achilles tendon tear. Uh, how will that change your offense? Will it put more pressure on you and some of the other backs? Um, I don't think so. I think Scott Mitchell's going to do a heck of a job. And one thing we got to do is kind of assess and, you know, get ready for him and get comfortable with him. Terry, you had the opportunity to play with two of the most successful coaches in football at college, George Welsh, and now with Don Shula there at Miami. Is there a common thread, a common denominator that lets those two guys be successful? Um, I think one thing is they're, they're positive coaches. You know, they're coaches on the field, and they come up to you, and they'll talk to you, and they, you know, they don't, not just with one, one portion of the team, they with the whole team, and that's, that's the key. Perry, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, we, we appreciate you coming down as Virginia trying to move the ball deep in their territory, Brad. And having a tough time doing it on a second down and 21. Terry Kirby, great player, over 3,300 yards, all-time leading rusher for the Cavaliers, and I don't think I've ever seen Don Shula gush over a rookie like he did over Kirby in, in uh, training camp this year, and they're going to need him and Scott Mitchell and a lot more with Marino down, that's for sure. Uh, Kirby did not play in this football game a year ago. He was injured for this that's football right. game, and uh, they probably needed him in both games. <laughs> they need something. It's third down and 17. shotgun, whistles and flags. Illegal procedure against Virginia will make it third down and 22. 
you just can't play on your end of the field and have this kind of penalty situation and long yardage against a defense like Florida State. Well, I really think that the, the early schedule, I, the lack of competition early in this season is really working against Virginia right now. They, this game is at a different tempo than they're used to. Third down at 22, and Willis to his own end zone. Sitting on deep sideline, broke it up. Looked like it was going to be completed, and there came Corey Sawyer again. I tell you, they have so much confidence in themselves, they bait you into a lot of throws. You can get burned by it occasionally, but you make a lot of great plays. Simeon Willis says, hey, against Ohio University and Navy, this one is wide open. This is nothing like pitch and catch, but look at Corey Sawyer come back, get his arm up, take the 35-inch vertical and make a play. And Will Bryce now backed up in his own end zone, trying to pull it out of there. Here comes the rush. He got it away. And a pretty good punt with all that pressure. Fair catch taken by Sawyer at the 48-yard line. 39-yard punt with a lot of heat coming on. The Virginia punter. It's Florida State with a 17 to nothing lead. Seminoles by 17. Simeon Willis found it much easier in the first five games this season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's not to say that Virginia's not going to have an outstanding football team, but when you play this type of competition early, Navy, Georgia Tech down a little bit, Duke has not come out well this year, and Ohio University, how do you get ready for Florida State? Danny Cannell in at quarterback. Marquette Smith, big hole right side. At almost 10 before he's dropped by Keith Lyle. Let's go to Jerry. Gentlemen, Florida State backup quarterback Danny Cannell's dad. Dan Cannell is the orthopedic surgeon for the Miami Dolphins. He is here watching his son play today. I spoke with him a little bit ago. He operated on Dan Marino, by the way, and he looks very optimistic at getting Marino back in early January. Since we talked to Terry Kirby, back upstairs. Second down at two. And Charlie Ward back in, and Virginia apparently offside in the person of Mark Frischbaum, and that'll give Florida State an automatic first down unless they were drawn offside yeah the problem is getting back in early january unless scott mitchell comes through he might be getting ready to play golf <laughs> which won't make him unhappy that's true he loves that <laughs> that's going to do wonders for his swing at corner killer isn't it offside with contact Maryland and beats Duke. will make the line of the game first down well there's the automatic first down sixth penalty against virginia Virginia needs some type of a big play from their defense and turn it around, and uh, that is their hope to get back in the football game. They need a turn. Charlie Ward up play action on first down. Completes it out to Jackson. It's inside the 30-yard line. Don't forget, the college football scoreboard show coming up after our game. Latest scores from around the country, all the highlights, the Heisman hopefuls, the late-breaking news, and more. Followed by the final game of our triple header, third-ranked Notre Dame in Provo to take on BYU. CFA primetime tonight right here on ESPN. Second down and six, Florida State at the Virginia 29-yard line with nine minutes, ten seconds left first half. And the Seminoles with a 17-0 cushion. Ward, deep ball, man open, overshot him, overshot everything. That would have been a touchdown. Kevin Knox out there all by himself, and Charlie Ward knows it. <laughs> well, that's like blowing a layup. <laughs> he doesn't blow Pat, many of those Pat, either. Pat Kennedy says, uh, you know, when you have that open that like that, dunk the ball, Charlie. Don't lay it up off the glass. <laughs> There's what he's done already. Speaking of Heisman hopeful, how about those numbers early? I think he's more than a Heisman hopeful at this time. If he doesn't get hurt or tease, he's going to be polishing the Heisman trophy here at Florida State. Oh, I got to lay up a buddy. <laughs> and it is third down at six. Florida State, three out of five on the third down conversion. So far, looks like they want the same play. He again threw it a little too deep and a little too far to the sideline, intended for the same man. Joe Crocker was out there this time, though, with Kevin Knox. I'll tell you what, we, we might be able to put the rest any arm trouble for Charlie Ward. I, I think if he has an arm trouble, it might have been from shaking hands last week after Miami, because <laughs> he's firing the ball right now. Maybe he should start icing it up for next week's game after this game right away. Scott Bentley. His longest field goal this year is 47 yards. This is from 46. I don't think it's 
got enough on it. Nope, and it's wide right. And they hate those words down here, but that's the case. Came across and hit his leg on that one, though. They're going to get a penalty on it. Virginia, just what they don't need. Running into the kicker. And now it changes the situation, becomes fourth down and one. Coming up here from the right side, you're going to see him come along, split, lay out, and boy, that's really questionable right there. That's about as lame as you can get a roughing the kicker. Bentley walked right in, and Carl Smith came in and did it perfectly. Five yards, running into the kicker, defense, still fourth down. Well, the reason I said it changes the situation a lot is because it's fourth and one, and here comes the Florida State offense. You're up 17 to nothing, and you get a freebie of five yards to make it fourth down and a long two feet, and you've got an offense like this. Why not try to get more? Fourth and a yard. Now they shift back into the eye. Floyd the up man. Jackson the tail. And it's Jackson left side. I think he got it, but not by much. Virginia's defense does a nice job. Jamie Sharper and Mike Frederick are out there. This one might take a measurement. I tell you, Mike Frederick is beside himself. That time Lonnie Johnson, number 85, the tight end, was the man assigned to him blocking him. And he has been crying for holding the whole game. Not Lonnie Johnson, Mike Frederick. Lonnie Johnson got away with one there. So the change will come from the far side. Virginia in definite need of a boost some way. And they get it here. They hold by inches. Virginia ball. Boy, it, it looked like he made it easily on that play, too. It was only fourth at a, at a couple feet, and it looked like they had a very positive play. You're getting the shot tonight's appearance by the Blockbuster Video Blimp, part of the 93 maiden tour through the eastern half of the United States. We welcome the Blockbuster Video Blimp and its crew to tonight's broadcast, giving us those great shots, shots from uh, atop Dope Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, where finally something went right for the Cavaliers, and they get the ball at their own 24-yard line with 8.42 left first half trailing. 17 to nothing. Way to pull back. A yard. That's it. Ken Alexander closed that hole in a hurry. Yeah, Ken Alexander and John Nance, number 57, is the guy who burst in there that time and hit him first, and then Alexander was able to uh, clean up on the play, but John Nance is a, a nose tackle back from a, having a tumor removed in his shoulder and uh, playing sound football form. Goes about 260, very active nose tackle. So the total yardage is fairly, almost three times as much for Florida State. Nice play fake, flag down, wide open is the tight end, Aaron Monday. But again, penalty markers at the line of scrimmage. <laughs> See if they're going to negate the 21-yard pass play here. Offside, defense, decline. Two breaks in a row go for Virginia. Well, they earned one of them. Right. They stopped them on the fourth down play, and this time they uh, caught a little bit of an offside penalty. But you can see the game plan evolving for Virginia. If they can grab some field position, they want to run play action, misdirection, and throw to the tight end. I think that's a sound game plan. They need to also use their backs in the passing game. First down the 46-yard line. The third first down is all so far this half for the Cavaliers. Washington got a couple before Clifton Abraham ran it down. And let's run it down to Mike Tirico. Mike? What a game going on in the Big A, Brad. Kansas State was down 10, a good chunk of the second half. Here's Chad May, the quarterback, who's approaching 400 yards on the day to Kevin Lockett, 58 yards. K-State down three in the fourth. Auburn is driving, tied with Florida. Inside of three minutes left in the game. We'll keep you updated. Terry Bowden coaching there. Bobby Bowden Seminoles up 17 here. Second and seven. Willis, oh, he tried a shuttle pass. It's incomplete. It's not a fumble. Seminoles think it is, but that's an incomplete pass. Intended for Larry Holmes, I think, number 20, the smallest guy in the pile down there. 
take a peek at this from the opposite side of the field. You're going to see a shovel pass. The ball will be thrown forward, but the problem is it's being run dead into a blitz. Look at the penetration by the Florida State defense. They got four guys behind the line of scrimmage on that play right there. Shovel pass will not work dead into a blitz. Simeon Willis has to be a little bit more aware in that situation and get to another play. Only 3 of 11 for 69 yards for a guy who came in leading the nation in passing efficiency. They haven't picked up a third down conversion yet either. Deep ball. He had a man open on the near side. I know it's easy to say after the fact, but he went to a guy double covered. Tyrone Davis incomplete. Simeon Willis right now is reading blitz coverage and throwing the ball downfield against it, and that is exactly what Florida State is trying to get him to do. They're confident with their corners. You're going to see the guy coming. Hold it right here. Look at No one's even covering this man right here coming across the field. That was at first down depth also, and he's throwing into double coverage. That was Jeffers who was wide open. And now the punt up coming. Bill Bryce kicks away. Sawyer with a fair catch. Take in on the run of the 14-yard line. Okay. With six minutes and 51 seconds remaining in the first half, the number one team in the country will be on offense when we come back. That fog's hanging over the Virginia offense so far today, too. Hi, Mom. That's me right there on the right-hand <laughs> side of the press box. 17 to nothing, Florida State. With Gary Danielson and Jerry Punch, I'm Brad Nestler with 6.51 remaining in the first half. And Florida State back out on offense. This is their worst starting field position of the day. But they have been inside the Virginia four times on the afternoon. And there's what they've done in the second quarter of this season. Third quarter's been even better. We'll tell you about that after that. <laughs> John Jackson off the right side, runs into Randy Neal. Again, six and a half minutes left to go. Virginia needs a three and out. They have to put some points up on the board here in the first half. Now even a field goal would be helpful going into halftime. I was talking about all those great Florida State defensive backs a little while ago, and I know Terrell Buckley's ears were probably ringing, and we just spotted him down on the sideline. Here watching the alma mater out to a 17-0 lead. Second and six. Ward from the shotgun. And now up he comes. Back into the eye set. It's going to be close to a first down for Jackson. Neal again on the stop. Charlie Ward follows through with his play fake so well, Gary, that you know that can set up something a little bit later. That well, almost so looked like a play action pass. Looked like he still had the ball. Also, watch William Floyd this time, number 44. You'll see Charlie Ward fake after he hands off the ball that helps but watch Floyd he's going to take on a blocker on the left side of your screen right there pancakes him and that's positive yardage first down Ward throws on the run completes it Vanover got about eight more interesting everybody talks about how well Charlie Ward can move and Bobby Bowden told us yesterday I really thought he was going to be a guy that was going to be a great play action quarterback and throw a lot on the run but he says that's really not his deal no he said he's best in the pocket almost like bringing down the court at the top ball down with basketball top of the key looking over the court and seeing who he wants to deal dish it off to very confident in the pocket and when he stays there he enlarges the field he can throw to when he rolls out you can only throw to one half the field now he can throw to the right or the left Tremendous vision when he's back there in that shotgun. He can see what is coming at him. Second down. And two. And Floyd cuts back first down across the 40. And bangs his way to the 42-yard line. Keith Lyle and Jamie Sharper holding on for dear life. But another nine-yard rumble for William Floyd. Let's go to Jerry Punch, Doc. Checked in with Randy Ward, which is a trainer for Florida State, on Charlie Ward's right elbow. Ward has not complained at all. He's playing very, very well. The biggest concern with the tendonitis is not what's happened in the first and second quarter, but late in the game when the swelling begins. And tomorrow, they would like to have been able to rest Charlie this week. They have an off week next week, but they couldn't rest him here with the Virginia team as tough as they were undefeated coming into the stadium. Back upstairs. See if that holds true in the second half for Charlie if Florida State continues the offensive assault. Here he goes doing what he does best. Gets what he can and does the slide at about the 48-yard line. As
has a great burst of speed that Bobby Bowden says I really had not seen until last week against Miami when he needed it he found another gear Heisman hunting Charlie Ward look at those interceptions last year and this year yeah and I think we saw the turnaround game for Charlie Ward a year ago against Georgia Tech right. when they took him out of the game he came back and pulled out that miracle against Georgia Tech in the fourth quarter from then on he's just been unstoppable two touchdown passes today no interceptions tremendous percentage again on the afternoon Facing second and five. Out of the flat. Dunn broke a tackle. Sideline move. Oh, man, what a run on the sideline. Somehow, tight roped it to the 24. He is an impressive-looking freshman. 28 yards. The great thing about great quarterbacks is they can look at one guy, come off him, and go to another guy. Let's watch Charlie Ward's eyes right here. He's looking downfield. Does he have anybody? No. Watch him refocus, get it out of his hand, and get it to his back down the sideline. Great quarterbacks refocus. He'll roll and throw on the run on first down. Man there to the four-yard line. McCorvey in his first and goal, another 20-yard pickup. I, I want to meet some of the guys that don't think he can play on the next level. Me too. <laughs> they, they probably bought IBM stock at 110. <laughs> I like the guy you likened him to the other day. I hadn't really thought about that. Roger Staubach. Well, I think so. He makes things happen all over the football field, and he has such great, calm demeanor about him, a great leader. First and goal again. Florida State up 17 at the Virginia 4. Ward across the middle. Vanover slips, or he might have had a touchdown. He yeah. think Killian is there. Yeah, that time uh, Vanover was wide open, a little bit open, and he had the uh, Vanover. That was his first guy. Progression. Vanover's the guy he's going to come to. Stop it right here, guys. Vanover's number one receiver, but watch the fullback coming out. That's Sean Jackson, the tailback, coming out. That was a touchdown to the wide side. you got to throw the first man if he's open, though. Second down and goal at the one. Floyd, the fullback. Jackson, the tailback. They've got six rushing touchdowns between them this year. And Floyd has another one. Well, there may be a team in... Florida that can beat the Florida State Seminoles this year but I don't know without Marino they might not be able to do it now. <laughs> With all due respect to Florida that'll be a big game but this team looks like a powerhouse to me. Third rushing touchdown of the season for William Floyd who bulls his way in to make it 23 to nothing. Scott Bentley to try to make it 24 to nothing. The top-ranked team in the country looking the part. You know, and Brad, I, I don't think there's any doubt that this football team might have been looking ahead, a little bit of a downer after a big game last week. But when you have this much talent, you spread it around. Everybody wants the ball, and they want their stats, and you just let it go on offense. Boy, and if you're a Florida State fan, you just hope that Renegade doesn't pull a hamstring in this one. <laughs> He's a busy horse. Don't forget Big Ten action next Saturday. Iowa at Michigan State. Quarterback Jim Miller. He'll back Craig Thomas. Receiver Mill Coleman and company lead the Spartans against Iowa. Then Big East action is our CFA primetime matchup. Number 22, Syracuse and 8th-ranked Miami will get together. You'll see Marvin Graves and company 7.30 next Saturday here on ESPN. Brad, we've had a lot of big cheers from this crowd today, but I think that last big cheer was the biggest, and that was Auburn now being announced as knocking off Florida. We talked to Bobby Bodden about his son, Terry. We said, can he keep it going and remain unbeaten and beat Florida? And he says, Ed Gum, I don't know if he's got the horses, but he thinks he can, and he did it. <laughs> what a start for the first-year head coach of the Tigers. Tyrone Davis from the two finds himself a little opening, cuts outside. It's Jared Washington, excuse me, and Washington takes it all the way to the 40-yard line of Florida State. 57-yard return. Let's go to Mike Tarenko, Mike. All right, Brad, I'll give you a little background on what Gary and you just reported on the Auburn 38-35 victory. Scott Etheridge, the Auburn kicker, kicking a 41-yard field goal in the final two minutes 
for the Auburn victory. The best team no one has seen is unbeaten, and Florida has its first loss of the year. Brad? Oh, they're digging it down in War Eagle country, huh? Florida State here by 24. 237 left in the half. Maybe the last hope this half for Virginia to get some points up. Nice kick returns. Put them in excellent position at the 740. First down. Willis throws Demetrius Allen with a catch. And the man they call Pete gets knocked out of bounds by Devin Bush. Not only about four yards on the pass play. Again, the touchdown right here puts you in with a little bit of a frame of mind. Scott Bedley, last play. Here he is, number three. He's a kicker. Usually you have to cover with ten men in this thing. Bedley's four more speed also. Even their kick grass speed around here. It's hard to run one back against this guy. Quite a high school athlete. Not just a kicker. Showed it there. Second down at six. For Virginia at the 36 yard line. Two and a half to play, first half, and Simeon Willis will use a Virginia timeout. We'll take a break as well. 2.29 left, first half, and it's all Florida State in this one so far. Coming into this game, Virginia had only trailed two minutes and 26 seconds all season long. Now with 2.29 to go in the first half, they have trailed the entire first half against number one Florida State. Don't forget coming up at halftime, an upset in the ACC, Michigan and Penn State highlights, Tennessee and Alabama, the big SEC battle, all that and more. Two minutes, 29 seconds, game time away. End around. Nice job of keeping his footing. Larry Holmes. They got knocked out by the Florida State defense when they got to the 34-yard line. Wow. Let's go to Jerry Punch, Doc. On the Florida State sideline with Casey Weldon, 1991 Heisman Trophy runner-up. And Casey, you're at Tampa Bay. You were here, and Charlie Ward was a freshman and sophomore. How is he different as you watch him today? Oh, he's. Uh, we knew he was going to be dynamite then. He was a punter, you know, then for us uh, as a freshman. So we knew. I knew I had to work hard to keep my job, and uh, he's playing great. They say he may not be able to play at the next level. You're there. What do you think? Can he play in the NFL? Oh, no doubt. He can be a great one in the NFL, and I look for him to be a high draft pick. Incomplete pass on third and three, intended for Tyrone Davis. We're visiting with Casey Weldon. Casey, let me ask you, it looks like a Florida State alumni day here on the sideline. There's a bunch of other guys here, uh, Terrell Buckley from Green Bay. Now, you play Green Bay in, uh, in a week or so in the NFL. What are you and Terrell talking about? I'm trying to get, a, you know, the coverages from him. He won't give them up, but uh, it's going to be a good game. I look forward to... Uh, Green Bay uh, coming to town, and uh, you know Buckley being uh, on the other end, it's going to be interesting. Come on, bud. Here's, here's Terrell Buck. Come here, Terrell. Come on, guys. Now you, you got you got these guys in a couple of weeks, in a week or so, uh, going to be easy on him. Yeah, I might be easy on him, but uh, you know we got that time to play. Back upstairs, guys. Fourth down. Willis, man open and missed him. Tyrone Davis, Sawyer covering. Second time Virginia's gone for it on fourth down in Florida State territory, knowing they have to to get points. And again, they come away without any. And that's just a different tempo that Simeon Willis is not used to. He had Tyrone Davis that time open, but he had to throw it before he was ready in that, that situation, and he was not accurate with the throw. So, uh, you know, a key fourth down play, they come away with nothing, and with a minute 35 to go in Florida State, they might put more points on the board yet. At least they're going to get practice running a two-minute drill here. They've got their full complement of timeouts left. Ward. Oops. Drop. Kevin Knox. Thinking about where he was heading and didn't take it with him. Second down. Bobby Bowden said that's sort of how this offense was born. Trying to pick up points late in halves and games, and it worked so well. Why not try it early, right? Yeah, we talked about it yesterday. He said that uh, we were struggling a bit last year, and, and we kept noticing that we were scoring every time we went into the two-minute drill. So we said, well, why don't we try it earlier in the game? And it would just kind of evolve more and more as this is the best way Charlie plays, and we've gotten good at it now. Four wideouts for Ward on second and ten. Trying to get it across the middle to McCorby. 
and almost picked off. McCorvey slipped, and Paul London was the closest man. Yeah, he had a blowout on that one because that, that was right in the seam, and it was released at the right time, but he just fell down on the play. You see Buckley's trying to call plays in the background <laughs> there. Bobby Bodden with a 24 to another lead has time to at least say hello to his former Corp Award winner, defensive back. You can always tell a winning coach his hat's nice and clean. They never Brand throw it down. Brand new every week. Brand new yeah. every week, you see. <laughs> Brill hasn't even been bent yet. He hadn't thrown it down once all year. You're going to ask for all the caps in the world when you've had six straight ten-win seasons, you know? Ward somehow escapes two Virginia defenders and completes it downfield to the 42-yard line to Matt Pryor. Well, I don't know if that's fair. Great defense, great rush, sidesteps a couple guys, going out of bounds, he's supposed to have a bad elbow, and he rips it downfield for a 30-yard throw and a, and a big game. Look at it from the, the wide angle, you're going to see the two defensive ends, they got him pinched, he steps in between of them, goes out to the right side, and reminiscent of last week, just delivers a great throw. Another nice throw, gets it to Van over out of bounds with another first down. We got to tell Charlie to slow down the plays here. We're trying to help him win the Heisman, and we won't even let us show the replays of his good plays. 103 left, and they have quickly moved it down to the Virginia 29-yard line. I, I figured out what's written on that wristband now. It says, God throws to the right, and then he scrambles <laughs> to the left, and God throws it left. He's been brilliant so far today and Charlie will come over and talk things over with coach Bob don't forget halftime just a minute three seconds away some of the things you'll see Michigan with a big road win today Tennessee and Alabama update an upset in the ACC that's one game I thought maybe the team we're talking about had never won at that particular place. We're teasing you here a little bit. But uh, we've got all that and all the scores and highlights 63 seconds from now. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Dr. Jerry Punch. No Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee, where it's been all Florida State number one coming in and definitely number one through the first two quarters. Bobby Bodden looking for win number 234 in this one eight consecutive bowl victories those 10 win seasons six in a row top four finishes and of course the national championship the only thing that's eluded them and uh, Miami was always one of the biggest hurdles they cleared that last week with a win but yet to come Notre Dame in South Bend November 13th and then the Florida Gators who have lost today at the end of the year and then of course a bowl game on January 1st so if you get through all of that I think <laughs> you should give them the national championship and the Super Bowl yeah, and, and a first into the NFL playoffs <laughs> first down at the Virginia 29 direct snap to Dunn and he gets it to the 18 yard line they used that effectively a week ago against Miami and they use it effectively for 11 yards and a first down here. Well, Warwick Dunn, just a freshman, is actually the roommate of quarterback Charlie Ward right here. You're going to see the snap right to Dunn. He reads it. I don't know if he's a better runner than Charlie Ward, but you got to spread it around a little bit. He makes another big play on a, on a play that <laughs> offensive coordinator Brad Scott and Mark Rick, and we have to give them some credit because they've done a nice job with this shotgun offense brought with them from the Buffalo Bills. They went up and visited him and took it a uh, reminiscent of third. And Thomas. Timeout Florida State with 55 seconds left. Those plays all work so well when you have those type of athletes. Yeah, not kidding. Don't forget all the latest scores from around the country coming up following our game on the College Football Scoreboard Show. All the highlights. Take a look at how the Heisman hopefuls did. One of them, of course, is here and playing brilliantly. The big upsets, the late breaking news, and then the final game of our triple header. Our CFA primetime matchup, the aforementioned Fighting Irish of Notre Dame at BYU, 7.30 tonight. Ron and Mike will be out in Provo to bring you all that action. Triple header day, ESPN's college football. Turned out to be a pretty nice day today. We had rain to start things off. It has uh, stopped, but nothing has stopped Florida State so far. 24 zip, 55 seconds left in the half. Problem for Virginia's proud football team and their defense is in the second half they're going to face a fired up second unit that is going to want to do the same thing. Florida State's second unit might be the 13th best team in the country. <laughs> Again, 
Charlie Ward in the spread with four receivers. Blitz coming on it. Picked up. And Charlie Ward takes off. Ward inside the 10. Touchdown! Oh, Houdini did pull it off. He is back. Wow. 18 yards. Touchdown, Florida State. I don't think words are needed to describe this one. Just watch a superb athlete make a play. That was about a 20-foot long jump for a touchdown. Bentley hits the left upright, and it kissed off to the left. It's the only thing that's gone wrong for Florida State today. I tell you, you're almost speechless watching this guy play. Mm. I think he should go ice up his elbow. I'm going to go try to get tendonitis in my elbow, too. <laughs> Charlie, nice job on that run. 18 yards for another Florida State touchdown. And catching Charlie Ward is like trying to straight it, straighten out the federal deficit. It's going to be a taxing process, and you probably never get it done anyway. I, I, there's not a, a college defense alive that can stop this man. 66 yards, six plays. It took Florida State 48 seconds to go down the field against Rick Lance, who's talking to his... Virginia defenders and Ward's 18-yard touchdown run capped it off. That might be all we see at Charlie today. You never know. But what we've seen has been something else. 30 to nothing, Seminoles. You know, we've seen a lot of great football players in the, in the last four years that I've been doing this for ESPN. Uh, guys like Desmond Howard light up a football game, throw Weedley, and uh, just get one after another, but I've never seen anybody dominate a college football game like Charlie Ward. Bentley's kick. Taken near the goal line by Washington. Who had a nice return last time. This time, not so lucky. Hit by Ken Alexander. And down it goes. And now we got a little tussle going on. And flags down near the five-yard line. Jermaine Green involved in that, number 42. Foul. Red team, first down. It's against Florida State, so that improves the field position, the personal foul. You're going to see it after the play. The last one right there is the one they called. And, uh, it's uh, going to get them on national television, but I don't think it's going to have much impact on the football game. Well, they moved the line of scrimmage out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. 42 seconds left in the half. Nice cutback run. Way the fullback. To the 35-yard line of Florida State. Give him 33 yards. Richard Coase finally ran out the big fella. Coase is going to make the tackle this time on the play. You're going to see it right up the middle, a little bit of an over-pursue that time, ways to the outside, and, you know, with 35 seconds still to go in the half, just for pride's sake, I'm sure Virginia would like to get some points on the scoreboard. Charles, 6'2", 230-plus out of Philadelphia, has his team a first down at the FSU 35-yard line. They go to the tailback inside the 30. Goes Brooks. Todd Rebo made the tackle. Bobby Bowden and uh, defensive coordinator for Florida State, Mickey Andrews, was concerned about the good blocking in the run game for Virginia, but they've just blown him out so badly on offense that the run blocking has just been no big deal. Willis downs it intentionally to stop the clock. Virginia does have one timeout left. And now they'll have a third and four upcoming after Simeon can talk briefly with Coach Welch on the sideline. Probably have time for two plays. It's third in about five, but they, with 15 seconds, you might get three, but most likely two football plays left in the half. Third and four to 29. Virginia, one 
timeout remaining. And still without a third down conversion. Flags down. They will get a conversion if this penalty isn't against the Cavaliers. As Monday, the tight end takes it to the 15-yard line. But again, penalty markers down. Virginia saying it's on Florida State. If it is, they'll have a first down for 15. Jim Knight says offside Florida State. So, indeed, that pass play of 15 yards will hold up. Here's an excellent opportunity now to get something up there before halftime. Ten seconds left. You've probably only got two plays left, though, if you're going to the end zone twice. And now the Florida State fans coming to life for their defense. Looking for a first-half shutout. Clock running. Might be the final play of the half. Willis in trouble. Down he goes. Are they going to get it stopped with a timeout? No. Tried to get the clock stopped and couldn't. Florida State, number one, and Charlie Ward. If there was something better than number one, that's what he's been through two quarters. It is 30 to nothing, Seminole. Looking down at Tallahassee, and the team that plays there is looking down at everyone else in college football right now. Florida State by 30 at the half. And we welcome you to our halftime report. Coach Corso, Craig James, third Saturday of October. Best Saturday of college football as far as this season goes, guys. And maybe the story of the season is what's going on in Auburn, Alabama. The Auburn Tigers on probation. Nobody can see them on live TV. At home, beat Florida by the score of 38-35. Auburn had a 35-27 lead. Danny Werfel threw a touchdown pass. The two-point conversion ties it. And then as time was running down, the 41-yard field goal for the win. So the Tigers are now 7-0, Florida 5-1. Now the other big SEC game in the state of Alabama, Tennessee at Alabama. Number 11 at number 2. The story here, how would Heath Schuler do going up against that tough tie defense. Over the top of it early to Craig Faulkner. Pick up the blitz and it works. 7-3 Vol to the second and problems for Schuler. Rolling right, looking for Faulkner again. But Antonio Langham gets in the way. Sets the Bama school record. 17 career picks. Alabama not able to get in the end zone. Three Michael Proctor field goals. But early in the third quarter, Jay Parker intercepted. And John Beeks for that to field goal of his own, 34 yards. So Alabama's lead down to one, late stages, third quarter. Let's go out to the Rose Bowl. Washington can't play there in the postseason, playing UCLA in the regular season. That's Napoleon Kaufman's second touchdown run. Terry Donahue down 15-0 in the first. What to do? Go up top. Wayne Cook to J.J. Stokes. Look at the move by Stokes, and he will beat the Washington secondary. 95 yards for the score. Stokes is averaging a touchdown every three times. He catches the ball, and he scored another touchdown later on in this game. It just started the third quarter. UCLA back in this game, trailing by four. In the Big Ten, unbeaten Ohio State against Michigan State. They're honoring the 1968 National Championship team in championship efforts thus far. Bobby Hoying to Joey Galloway, 22-yard catch. 7-0 for Brutus. Second quarter, it's 7-3. The senior, Brett Powers, in at quarterback. On the play action, up top Galloway one more time. Through the defense and into the end zone. What a start for Galloway thus far this season. It's 14-3. Then the tailback is State. Pounds it on the ground. Steve Holman, the one-yard run, gets it to 14-10. But another Galloway score before halftime. He has all three Ohio State touchdowns. Buckeyes lead by 11 starting the second half. Big eight, big one. Colorado at Oklahoma. Gary Gibbs down 6-0. Cordell Stewart to Charles Johnson. Watch the speed. Can't stop him, can't catch him. 64 yards for Johnson, and the Bucks lead the Sooners 13-0. Little razzle-dazzle from Coach McCartney. Lamont Warren slipping before his knee hit the ground. Charles Johnson on his knees. Tremendous catch. Showering the field with oranges, and uh, it wasn't an easy one for the Oklahoma team or the Sooner Schooner, folks. Look at this late in the first half. Like the team, the Sooner Schooner taking a tumble. 23 starting the third quarter right now. Sooners haven't gone 6-0 since 1987. Gary Gibbs trying to get off the Colorado schnoz. Some other scores. What about Southern Miss going into Louisville after the Cardinals lost in Morgantown last week and leading by 15 at halftime. Southern Methodist, one quarterback, Ramon Flanagan's out, but Mark Eldred, the other quarterback having a big day, leading Houston by 7. 
TCU out of conference against Tulane in the fourth. TCU looks like they have a chance to snap their three-game losing streak. And John Ralston looks like he's on his way to win one at San Jose State, 0-5. San Jose leading New Mexico State, which was unbeaten in the Big West. Gentlemen, back to what's really going to be the big story in college football, Auburn. Their next couple of games, they're at Arkansas, New Mexico State. Their last two games at Georgia and Alabama at home. Can they go 11-0? They can do it. They can win all of their games. They can beat Georgia at Georgia. The big challenge will be playing Alabama at home. Terry Bowden's team believes in themselves. They have a purpose. They can run the football. We saw today that Stan White can throw the football. That's really important when they're playing against a defense like Alabama at the end of the year. Alabama's never won in Jordan-Hare Stadium. Of course, they're only 0-1. They've only played their once. <laughs> yeah, but of all the guys in the country, i got to give you credit. You picked that Auburn uh, uh, high school. They're going to send them two tickets in an Alabama game now. <laughs> I want to talk about Michigan. Michigan had an excellent comeback. They got bombed at Michigan State, but they came back to show a lot of credit character. Now watch out in that Big Ten race. A lot of things are going to happen there. And for those of you who didn't see what happened with the Michigan game, we're going to show you highlights. A great final quarter of this game as Michigan really stepped it up a little bit. We're going to show you that and especially the defensive stand that the Wolverines were able to make on Penn State at the goal line. It was Big Ten style football. Four tries from inside the one. They kept knocking and nobody answered the door. The highlights of the scoring plays in this game as well as we continue on the halftime report momentarily. It's blowout city for number one, Florida State, leading Virginia, 30-0. We'll continue at halftime after this. We continue with the halftime report. We've already showed you the score from the Auburn-Florida game. Now let's give you the first look at the game-winning field goal. I mentioned Florida had come down the field, a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Scott Etheridge, who was 6 of 6 from inside 40, but 0 for 1 outside of 40 yards, hits a 41-yarder to win the game for Auburn. As I mentioned, Florida with the one conference loss, their next game, the cocktail party against Georgia after an off week. Let's take it back to the Big Ten. Game 1,000 for Penn State and Joe Paterno. Game 1 for the school against Michigan. Third quarter, Penn State up 10-7. Collins to Mercury Hayes. And the Wolverines lead 14-10. Later in the third, we showed you the entire stand. Penn State knocking on the door. They tried to stuff it in from the inside, from the one-foot line. Couldn't get in. This was fourth down. What a play by the Michigan linebackers to stuff key John a Carter. Tyrone Wheatley able to run free. Look at the big numbers. Is Michigan and Penn State its first loss of the season and first conference loss. Wisconsin against Purdue. Earlier on ESPN, Daryl Bevel, who would later leave with an injured ankle. To Terrell Fletcher takes it in. Swan dive. 21-0 Wisconsin. Jim Coletto and the Boilermakers had a long day. Nice effort to make the score more bearable to look at at the end, but it ended up 42-28. This is Wisconsin's best start in some eight decades. Wisconsin has Michigan at home later on in a couple of weeks. Also in the Big Ten, Illinois pounding Iowa. 49-3, Iowa losing at Kinnick Stadium. The Hawkeyes have scored 20 points in their last four games. Minnesota, after the dramatic win over Purdue last week, beats Northwestern in the rain at Dyke Stadium. Northwestern 0-3 in conference. In the ACC, maybe we should have seen this coming. Clemson has a 3-1 record in conference, but their three victories by a total of 12 points. Today, home for Wake Forest, a team that beat Clemson last year. Jim Caldwell looking to become the first coach since Dan Devine to win his first game in Death Valley, going up against Kenny Hatfield. Scoreless in the first, this is Jim Kemp. Yes, it is Jack's son. Look at him go for the corner. Stick that ball over the plane. Touchdown, 7-0, Demon Deeks. Wake up 13-10 in the third. John Leach from six yards out. Wake's first win in Death Valley since 1961. That's a span of 16 games. Kemp's number is 177 yards. The touchdown run you saw and the touchdown pass. Bad loss for Clemson. NC State had to come back and score the last 17 of the game to beat Marshall from Division I AA by seven. North Carolina pounded Georgia Tech 41-3. North Carolina plays Virginia next week, and you wonder what the Cavs are going to have left after today. Maryland gets its first win, 26-18 over Duke. Scott Milanovic, 414 yards. Keep putting up those numbers. Nebraska and Kansas State on homecoming in the Big A in Lincoln. Fourth quarter, it's a 10-point Nebraska lead. True freshman Lawrence Phillips. Speed to the corner and 46 yards. Nebraska hangs on. K-State was answering them almost score for score. One of the best stat lines of the day, K-State quarterback Chad May, 488 yards passing. That's a big eight record, but it wasn't enough for the win. 
Missouri at home gets its first conference win of the season, easily over Pat Jones' team by 33. Okie State now 0-2. And Kansas at home gets its first conference win in its second Big 8 try. Iowa State falls to 0-2 in the Big 8. We're at halftime of uh, another Charlie Ward show. Put them all together, and here's your Heisman Reel, friends. It's 30-0. We're coming back with highlights from the SWC and the Big East. We continue at halftime, go to the Southwest Conference. Can the Aggies keep rolling? Coming into today's game in Waco against Baylor, looking for an 18th straight conference win was R.C. Slocum. Right, Corey Pulley to Greg Hill, the screen. Nine yards, he looks just fine. Looks like he hasn't missed a beat. He does the entire team. Score was tied at 10, but it was a pounding from there on. 24-7 A&M the rest of the way as they win. In the Big East, you'll see Syracuse at Miami next week. This was fourth down. Pittsburgh down three, and Johnny Majors decides to try the touchdown. Despite Curtis Martin's 206 yards, he couldn't get it done there, and the Orangemen beat Pitt, but not impressive at all. Virginia Tech pounds Temple 55-7 at Lane Stadium. The Hokies are now 2-2. Two and two. Temple has yet to win a Big East game. Rutgers, a big scare at Mikey Stadium, but survived to beat the Cadets 45-38. Navy is now 4-2, going to play Colgate of Division I AA and beating the Red Raiders by 28. To the southwest, uh, to the southeast, I should say, back to the southeast. Ole Miss in Arkansas. Look at this run by Renard Brown. Outside, 23-yard score, 16-0 Ole Miss, and the Rebels just gave the Hogs a headache on this day. 19-0 Ole Miss plays Alabama next week. Will they give them a tough game? Will they win in Jackson today to get a third conference win? Georgia all over Vandy, and finally a conference win. Eric Zyers putting up some huge numbers. They're going to ride his arm the rest of the way. East Carolina gets its second win of the season, beating Louisiana Tech. Perez Madison, two touchdowns in the win for East Carolina. What about Ohio finally getting a win, snapping the nation's longest losing streak, which they hand right across the field to Kent. Tulsa goes to the Liberty Bowl and beats Memphis State by four, the second win for the Golden Hurricane. And Northern Illinois, LaShawn Johnson, 224 yards. Big effort on the ground as they rally to beat Pacific by five. We're at halftime in Tallahassee. Charlie Warden Company looking to almost sew up the ACC title. They lead by 30 at halftime. Terrific game going on in the SEC between Tennessee and Alabama. We'll take it to the highlights. I mentioned in the second half that after a field goal, Tennessee had taken the lead. They're trying to knock it in again. James Stewart takes the pitch, drops it. The goal line, Bama's defense comes up strong. Shannon Brown was down there. This is not the touchdown. They ended up calling him back. It's a one-point lead for Tennessee. They're in the late stages of the third quarter at Legion Field. Bama looking for that record streak. UCLA at the Rose Bowl. Remember I told you they were down 15-0? Cook to Stokes. One more time, that's the third touchdown on the day for J.J. Stokes. Napoleon Kaufman is two for Washington, but the Bruins have rallied from down 15 to take a three-point lead. Washington State also in the Pac-10. The good news is they're up. The bad news, Mike Pattinson, their outstanding quarterback, broken collarbone in this game against 21st-ranked Cal. You look at the Tennessee deal, they have turned the ball over five times, yet there's, you know, Alabama's hanging in there. And also Florida State, superior athletes. How good are they? You know, Virginia's not bad. I know you don't believe it. Florida State is awesome. I found out a way to stop Charlie Ward. Steal that wristband. <laughs> no, that won't even work. Now they're killing them. They're looking strong. And maybe some of the luster taking off the Florida game now with Florida losing. Thanks for watching at halftime. Back to Brad and Gary and Dr. Puck after this. Just about set to start the second half in Tallahassee, and it's been all Florida State. Quarterback comparison in this one, I don't think there's any comparison when you match up Charlie Ward against somebody. Well, yeah, it really doesn't matter. This time, the, the victim is Simeon Willis. He has to go against the Heisman winner, uh, Charlie Ward, right here. And uh, Charlie was on target, threw a couple uh, away, and had one dropped, I know, that big-time yardage there. So, But an interesting thing is the scattering report on Charlie Ward is he likes to throw the ball to the outside, outside the hash. As you can see, he did. He threw... Three out here for 129 yards, five in this flat, five here. But we have noticed a weak spot over here. He doesn't like to throw long down the left <laughs> side of the field. Charlie must have had some dirt in his eye That's over there, right. right? That's right. He was brilliant in the first half. And you wonder how much of him we'll see in the second half. Florida State will kick off. That's Danny Cannell, who would be, uh, it would be his turn to play because the uh, Florida State approach 
has been to play Charlie Ward, and then when things get out of hand, either John Stark or Danny Cannell. It's Danny's week, the coaches tell us, so we'll wait and see. Right now, it'll be Virginia offensively as we start the third quarter. Jared Washington on the kick from the five. He's done a nice job on those kick returns today. Got out near the 30, out to the 29. Halftime statistics, as you might guess, all Florida State. Yeah, all Florida State, and I don't even know those, those statistics, as bad as they look, actually make it look closer than the game is really uh it was just so dominating in that first half leading tackler for virginia is their safety keith lyle he has nine tackles in that game and uh, you know even the time of position everything they've done has been florida state win. virginia works from the 29. play fake willis hooks up with his tight end that play has worked today the tight end monday's been a busy one he got 18 yards and a first down that's his fourth catch on the afternoon Let's go to Jerry Punch. Doc? I spoke with Cavalier coach George Welsh at halftime. He said, you know, we just can't come out in the second half irrespective of the 30-point deficit and put the ball up every down to just tee off against us. We've got to be patient. We have got to get first down. We cannot uh, leave ourselves in a second and third and long. They'll come after us too much. We've got to get yards on first down. Back up there. Jerry Punch, Jerry Danielson, Brad Nessler with you, and Tallahassee. And trying to go back to the ground game doesn't work for the Cavaliers. Washington swarmed under by John Nance, the nose man, Alonzo Horner, the linebacker. And Nance, again, that penetrating style of defense. He was in the backfield. He's playing off one shoulder, a block from the guard that time, bounces into the into the backfield and just finds the ball carrier. So active across the front and not big football players. They go 260, 270. Now, that sounds big. They're fast. But, but in college football, that's just average size. They just move. Lost a three on that one. Second down at 13. Washington found an opening, a lot of room ahead. Jared Washington inside the 20 before he's powered at the 16-yard line. Richard Coase saved a touchdown, a 39-yard pickup, though, for Jared Washington. Brad, this is the second time they've caught Florida State in a blitz just running up the middle. And what they've done is with a quick count, the quarterback got up there and snapped the ball very quickly. Florida State was trying to disguise it, and they were not in the proper position. The great speed of the Florida State secondary and Coase saved the touchdown. The 16-yard line, first and 10, Cavaliers. 14 taking a shot from Clifton Abraham. Those Kevin Brooks. Virginia has been very proficient in the opponent's red zone this year. You get inside the 20 and they always get points. This is their first trip inside the 20 this afternoon. But on the season, they've been down there 18 times and 15 touchdowns and three field goals. So they have always made it count. And Florida State coming in has not allowed much for the opposition when it's inside that scoring zone. Second and eight. Willis rolls left, rolls left, found his man at the nine-yard line. He has taken an eight-point fourth-quarter lead over Alabama. Well, if that one should stay that way, number two Alabama would fall after number three Miami fell a week ago. That would move... Notre Dame into the driver's seat behind Florida State if they beat BYU tonight. And that would set up a one and two in November if everything stays status quo between the Irish and the Seminoles. Flags down. Would have been a first down run. Ken Alexander and Richard Coase combined on Charles Way. Let's see about the markers, though. The formation did not look right just as I was watching it. it, it but it, it, normally in this situation, when you throw it so quickly, someone's lined up in the neutral zone or it's a bad formation. Florida State gives Virginia a chance to finally get on the board. We thought there were a couple key points in this game, and we just went through one of them, plus 20, getting in there and scoring. The other was holding the Florida State defense without any points. Well, if they score here, they'll accomplish that, and they haven't given up any points yet, but they're still trailing 30 to nothing. And they haven't given up any points all year in the third quarter. First and goal at the four. They still haven't given up any. His way got a couple. Todd Rebol and Ken Alexander, the two inside backers, combined on the hit. Brings up second and goal at the three-yard line. Ken Alexander played outside linebacker a year ago 
who moved inside, re basically replacing Marvin Jones in this defense. The fans haven't had to do the chant and the chop all day because their touchdowns have come quickly and the defense hasn't been pressed. Second and goal at the three. Not this time either. No way for Charles Way. Corner made first contact. And it is third and goal. Just amazing penetration by that defense. It was like they knew the direction of that play. They got to the point, seven, maybe eight players before the running back got. Watch the line from the right, that everybody just hitting into the backfield, people clogging the, the running alleys. That's team defense. And if you think that Florida State hasn't come up with goal line stands this year, think back to the kickoff classic against Kansas. 12 cracks inside the 10 for Kansas in that game, and they never did get in. And a timeout, Virginia may have been a man short. And they'll take a break here to try to talk things over and assure the best play on third and goal from the four when we come back. ESPN's presentation of CFA football is brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, who reminds you, friends know when to say when. And by Fortis, innovative insurance and investment products. Solid answers for a changing world. Doak Campbell Stadium, Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson, and Jerry Punch. Let's go to Jerry right now. Gentlemen, what do you say to your team when you're up by 30 at halftime? Well, Bobby Bowden appealed to his defense to maintain their intensity. He told them, he said, we're the number one football team in the nation. we got to play like we're number one. He said, Alabama is giving up some points today. We don't want to. We're number one. Contain the shutout. Maintain the intensity. Guys, we do not want to let them score. Let's see if it'll happen. Derek Brooks on the sideline with pads off. And brought his team mates on that defense on, as you saw there. And now we'll find out. Third and four. Probably two down territory anyway. So this may not be the final attempt at the end zone here for Virginia. There's Derek screaming for his defense. Third and goal. Cavalier. Willis locks it. Nice catch. Touchdown, Davis. Went up high and pulled it in. Four-yard touchdown pass from Simeon Willis to Tyrone Davis. They were able to isolate Davis against Mac Knight, number 19 for Florida State. You'll see inside on this play, they're going to try to rub off a little pick for the running back coming out. But Davis is man-to-man. -man. Good throw this time by Willis. Puts it up there. Knight actually interferes a little bit, but perfect execution for the touchdown. Kirk Addy's extra point is up and good. With 10 minutes and 24 seconds. Remaining in the third quarter, Virginia finally on the board. It is 30 to 7, Florida State in front. Yeah, I think that'll ensure that we're going to see Charlie Ward a couple more series in this football game, too. The longest Charlie Ward's played this year was against North Carolina as we look at the touchdown again. You can see Florida this time, State this time comes, and I think the other key here, you know, Tyrone Davis, he goes 6'5", 220, so he's able to shield off the defender that time and make the play. Tyrone's fifth touchdown catch of the season. Tops on the uh, Cavalier receiving charts. Got the blimp shots like Pebble Beach here today, too. You know, a little bit of the fog rolling in. <laughs> Let's go to Mike Tirico before the kick. Mike. Hey, Brad, we'll take you to Louisville. And the Cardinals are struggling. Against Southern Miss, down 24 to 8. Jeff Brom to Aaron Bailey. Oh, how did that end up in his hands? A 20-yard score, and of course we want to see his face, so he takes off his helmet. The nine-point lead for the Cardinals. I thought they told us that at the beginning of the year that was going to be a penalty this year when all that went on. I guess not. <laughs> well, everybody not. does it. Yep. 30 to 7, Florida State. Virginia finally in the end zone. Tamaric Vanover back. I say he kicks it to the 21-yard line. <laughs> what's, what's your yep, you got it. It's going to land at about the, let's see, where'd it go out of bounds? It would have been about the 21. Uh, 23, no, you're 20, close. 21 and a 22 and a half yard line. And again, virtually no kickoff return uh, 
numbers all year long for Florida State. The key here is being able to evenly distribute the ball. Four runs, four passes, hit a couple big plays, and that's what enabled them. The big fullback play up the middle also was key in, the, in this drive, and then, then finally the touchdown pass to Davis. You're right about Charlie Ward. He is going to play some more. Talk to Brad Scott, offensive coordinator here in the, in the hallway. I, I said it must have been a tough halftime. What did you do, got on eat? You know, <laughs> and, and, no, we're going to kind of keep Charlie Ward in our offense in one more series. We like to come out the first series, put points on the board, and then go to our second game. Charlie Ward, Florida State offense from the 35, following the out of bounds kick. Nice play action. Ward scrambles away again. And just got what he could, about three yards, and out of bounds. It'll be second down at seven. And again, we get the shot from the blockbuster video blimp providing our ESPN shots, these beautiful aerial shots of Oak Campbell Stadium. We thank them for being along. High atop Tallahassee, Florida. Second down at seven. Back on the ground. 30 to seven. Florida State in front. From the gun. The hand off the floor. The fullback. Near a first down, about a yard short, Randy Neal. And then involved in a lot of tackles today for Virginia. Made the stop. Leon Willis, number one, and the number one touchdown pass finally came a few minutes ago. He's going to be a good one. Already is. There's going to be better days ahead for him. And there's only, what, about six games left for this guy <laughs> before he goes on to basketball and then a career in whichever sport he so chooses, I guess. Third down, a long one. Floyd got it. Needed to get to the 45 and just got that big 245-pound body across it. And that's really an interesting uh, time that's going to come up for Charlie Ward as, he, as the season ends and he's going to jump into basketball again. You know, with the uh, NFL draft coming up in the combine, you wonder what his decisions will be. Will he go out and work for the pro scouts and then try to up his stock to become a first-round pick, or will he play basketball? And, uh, a lot of interesting decisions for Charlie Ward as he ends his senior season. And a brief official time out to get Patrick McNeil, the right guard off the field, who's shaken up. Chad Bates comes in to take his spot. First down. Ward. Across the middle, another first down. Kez McCorvey. Keith Lyle made the hit, but it's another first down. Florida State. 11-yard pass play. When you watch Florida State on film and you watch them uh, on the field here, there's nothing magical about their offense. It's a very simple offense. You see guys going down 12 yards and button hooking like we used to call it when he was a kid. You got a guy that's just standing back there and dishing it out. Uh, you got four wide receivers going down 15 yards, turn around, and Charlie throws to the guy who's open. You saw Matt Pryor, one of his receivers, come out, shaken up. So back-to-back -back plays have Seminoles go down. But it is first down at the 44-yard line of Virginia. Ward across the middle, using another receiver. This is Kevin Knox. And Knox gets out of bounds. Another 11-yard pickup, and it's just first down after first down after first down for Florida State. And if you think Charlie Ward has a great passing arm as a football player, you maybe haven't seen him play basketball. Charlie Ward is a magician on the basketball court just as much as he is out on the football field. I did this game last year against Wake Forest here in Tallahassee. Look at this pass. That's Hello. Post route. Yep. Not bad, huh? <laughs> He's got a lot of those every game. He'll get back probably January 2nd to the, the hardwood for Pat Kennedy and company. First down, Charlie wide open. Philip Riley, Riley broke the tackle. third of the day. 
you got to get Riley a lot of credit for this one here. Uh, no, again, Florida, I mean, Virginia is going to run a blitz. Riley's going to come out here. It's just a hot receiver to the outside. Two men are going to squeeze him in. That's a hot receiver. One of them has to play outside technique, one inside technique. Riley, the old fake him out and go for a touchdown. I'm sorry, Brad. That's the thing you buy about Florida State. I mean, they're just out here playing almost flag football. They got 37 flags to seven for Virginia with 8, 38 left third quarter. Philip Riley in the middle of the celebration who just plain left a couple of Virginia defenders en route to a 33-yard touchdown that's up the lead to 37 to seven. Florida State. Yeah, you don't really don't see moves like that from your number eight receiver. <laughs> <laughs> the Bentley to kick. Jared Washington from the six. Out to the 23-yard line. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Doctor? Gentlemen, update a couple injuries here on Florida State sideline. Patrick Vanille, the junior offensive guard, came off with a mild left ankle sprain, and right now they're retaping the senior split in Matt Fryer's right ankle. That's Andy Barker, assistant trainer here. Looks like Matt Fryer probably will go back in. Mom, mommy's okay. He smiles to the camera, and uh, if needed, he can go back in and play. Back upstairs. All right, Matt. Well, the 72-yard touchdown toss from Charlie Ward last week that helped to the Miami win, and there's the numbers for Charlie Ward today. 291 yards. Touchdowns. Simeon Willis, his counterpart, deep middle, and that ball almost intercepted by Corey Sawyer. He's been close on a couple today. He would have been off to the races if he could have gathered that one in. Brad, I grew up watching Lem Barney for the Detroit Lions play quarterback, and he would bait quarterbacks into throws all the time to get interceptions. Deion Sanders did it in his career. Watch Corey Sawyer right here, number eight. He's going to let this man get open on the post. Go ahead and run it, guys. He lets him go inside. He knows he can close on the ball. Watch him close on that throw. That's the only way you can pick him up. you got to leave him open a little bit. Draw play inside to Washington. Out across the 25. Byron Marion made the stop. 8-13 left third quarter. And no guess Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. Got about, I guess, 76,000 or so. And the folks from the Blockbuster Blimp with us. Third down at six, Virginia. to the 31, but it's a couple short. Patrick McIntosh brought him down. And it'll bring up fourth down in a couple. Let's go back to Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Gentlemen, you wonder why Florida State never looks very tired here on the football game, particularly when they're putting up so many points, but you got to consider this. A lot of kids want to come here and play, and indeed they do play. In the first quarter today, Florida State played 66 different athletes in the first quarter alone. Wow. That's something. Some serious depth on this team. Bryce to putt. Nice high towering putt. Sawyer waits on it. He's going to try it for the 16. And only got a couple. Nice coverage. Great hang time on a 53-yard kick. Nice job by Will Bryce, the freshman putter. Don't forget all the latest scores from around the country. Loads of highlights. Take a look at how the Heisman hopefuls did. The late breaking news. The upsets and all of what went on in this college football Saturday coming up on a scoreboard show. And then the final game of our triple header, Notre Dame and BYU will tangle in Provo. Notre Dame enters the game ranked third. If they win that game, they'll be number two in the nation if Tennessee holds on to beat Alabama. That's a lot of ifs, I understand that. But uh, that's all coming up yet tonight on ESPN. And then Lou Holtz will say it's the worst number two team in the country. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> the Sandman will be out, won't he? Charlie Ward stays in. I'm a little surprised, quite honestly, at the 19-yard line. First down. Jackson broke one tackle. Got back across the lot of scrimmage. Picked up maybe three. Tough run to pick up three yards. John Harris in on the stop. Let's go to Mike Tirico. Mike? Brad, Washington led UCLA 15-0 before the last play of the first quarter. Since then, it's 32-3 UCLA. 
and that's J.J. Stokes, his fourth touchdown catch from Wayne Cook on the day. Slow down, J.J. Wow, 37-7 here with 6.20 left, third quarter, the second and seven for the Florida State offense. Ward in trouble, got rid of it at the last second and got it to Kevin Knox. Charlie took a shot after he delivered the ball and Knox takes one at the end of the play. Jerry. Guys, at halftime, the, the feeling was that Charlie Ward would come in and play a couple of series only. As Gary Danielson talked to one of the offensive coaches upstairs, said we, our idea was to come in and put Charlie in for a couple of series and sit him down the rest of the game. Well, Virginia scored, and that changed. A lot of respect on the Florida State sideline for George Wells and the Cavaliers by leaving Charlie Ward in the football game. Back upstairs. Charlie takes that wristband and says, let's see, I'm staying here about five more minutes, get another touchdown, and then I'm taking the pads off. Hey, he gets knocked to the ground and blows his shoulder out there. There's going to be a lot of people questioning this one. Yeah, third down at three, and it's going to be short of the first down as they run the quick draw off the shotgun. And it'll force a punting situation for the Seminoles. So nice job by the Virginia defense. Forces a kick, and that is something you don't see a lot of. Sean Liss, he's had one today, though, for 43. Larry Holmes will drop back for Virginia. Ten men up on the line for the Cavaliers. Trying to bring some pressure. They got close. And Holmes will make the catch on a 32-yard punt at the 41-yard line. 4.50 remaining third quarter. It is Florida State by 30. Well, that's one of the 76,607 on hand. Second largest crowd ever at Doe Campbell Stadium. Here today, the largest crowd last week in the win over Miami. 37-7 the score. Virginia. Sitting on Willis, given up yet. On the play action, clears it out complete. Jared Washington to the 47. Clifton Abraham made the tackle there. Second down, about five coming up. The Florida State band doesn't give up either, by the way. They, they just play, doesn't matter what the score nope. is. They get more playing time than anybody on the squad. <laughs> Maybe Jerry was counting some of those he guys when he counted he those six or six people. Charlie Ward relaxing right now. Second and five. brought him down at the 42-yard line. 10-yard gain, though, for Jared Washington. Washington, one of the captains on this Virginia team, had a good game last year, 50 yards rushing and a couple of catches, but he did fumble inside the 10-yard line when Virginia was trying to score a touchdown against Florida State. With the four-minute mark, third quarter. First and 10 Cavaliers at the Seminole 42-yard line. Nice block for Willis, who rolls and throws incomplete, intended for the tight end Monday again. Because Florida State's corners are so active and they have such great confidence in them, they are allow their free safeties, right now Richard Coase and Devin, Devin Bush, their strong safety, to jump those crossing routes. Florida State might try to do a play action and take a post behind those guys. That'd be their chance for a big play against those safeties because they are jumping across the crossing right now. Second and 10, both wide outs to the bottom of your screen. Trying to give it and a quick draw. Got three yards for Washington. Then he ran into Ken Alexander, I think tackler on the team. Ken Alexander's all over the football field making tackles, and the, and the scary thing is that Marvin Jones could still be playing for this team. That's right. He's not in the lineup, not even in pads today. He just joined us. The favorite, probably, for the Butkus Award. No, that's Derek Brooks. I'm saying Marvin Jones. He still had another yard. Oh, that's, yeah, <laughs> I was thinking about Derek Brooks. Third down at seven. Nobody's covering the wide receiver. Quarterback draw. Willis, first down. Dives down to the 22. 17 yards for Willis. 
Kind of a bust by the Florida State defense right there. They're all talking to each other. The reason is no one covered the wide receiver to the top of the screen. You see, this man's on him. He's going to blitz. Demetrius Allen, number two, could go right down the field. No one even looking at him. So Virginia at the 22-yard line on the first down. another. Guess who? Ken Alexander time after time. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Jerry? Hey, the great defensive history of Florida State. Another one right here with me, Carl Simpson from the Chicago Bears, second round draft choice. And Carl, how good, we didn't see him play today, but how good is Derek Brooks? He's great, actually. I mean, he's another Marvin Jones, maybe a little faster. He's, right now, he's playing better than Marvin was last year. But, you know, both of them are great people. But, uh, Derek Brooks is a great linebacker. Last week, you didn't get to share in the victory over Miami. Three times you tried and couldn't do it. It was tough for me as my three years here to do it, but I was so happy for the, uh, the guys to win last year, man. It was just like I was here because I got a lot of love for the team. Hey, thanks for joining us. Back upstairs. Second and eight for the 20. Over the middle, wide open, and touchdown Virginia's Patrick Jeffers. 20 yards. The Cavaliers have scored a couple here in the third quarter. Florida State defense has lost their focus in this football game. There's just no doubt about it. Another wide receiver running wide open, coming from the right side. No one covers them again. That's the second receiver in the last three plays that no one even tries to cover. That's about as easy as you get it. Willis just dumps it over the middle, a four-yard pass for a touchdown. Simeon Willis, two touchdown tosses this half, 15 on the year, and the extra point... Kyle Kirkady right through the middle with two minutes and four seconds. Jeffers, Willis' favorite receiver coming in. It caught the most balls and finally has one today. Good for a touchdown. Jeffers is going to line up in the backfield a number of times. We're going to get a blitz from one of these guys, but two people cover the tight end, and Jeffers is going to come across the middle of the field. No one in there. Two people take the tight end. Jeffers wide open. Another busted assignment. Coase and Knight seem to be have a problem communicating in the secondary. Might be a little bit of communication problems on the sideline, too, as you see Abraham and Coase talking it over. Nicky Andrews, defensive coordinator, comes in to sort of uh, cool his two defensive backs' nerves a little bit. And you know Bobby's not too crazy about this quarter. Go ahead and drive a good one. 59 yards, seven plays, 246, a nice mix of the run and the pass, and Jeffers capped it off. You know, and I, Brett, I think we have to, to give Bobby Bowden credit here, too. Uh, you know, he did not take Charlie Ward out of this football game, and the football game's not over. Uh, it, it may seem that way, but Virginia has the ability to score with the passing game, and it's too early to take Charlie Ward out of this football game. I think we both overreacted a little bit to it. Bobby Bowden knows how to coach. Right now it's a three touchdown game if you consider two point conversions in there. Uh, I can admit what I'm wrong. Can Billy right? <laughs> You'd be the only guy at ESPN. <laughs> Here's a kick. Riley who scored the last touchdown takes it at the goal line. Finds himself a little alley. Philip Riley flags down. He got to the 45. That might have an illegal block to negate a great 44 yard return. And if so, it'll back it up more like the 25. Jim Knight will give us a preliminary signal here in a minute. But it looks like everybody's walking back. There it is, illegal block on the return. And all for naught for Riley, but uh, still one that'll make the highlight film anyhow. Well, I tell you, buddy, if uh, if that makes the highlight film, that's going to be the longest highlight film <laughs> in the history of highlight films because they have five a highlight hours film and right. 16 seconds, and he gets the last <laughs> 10 <laughs> seconds of that one. <laughs> Sorry, there, Barnes. Yeah, but well, that's a long highlight film. It was a film. it was a figure of speech, I guess. <laughs> 23 yard line, first and 10. <laughs> Out of the shotgun. Floyd, quick opener off the right side. And he blasts his way out near another first down. Let's go to Mike Carrico, Mike. Brad Scare here. Cale Gundy, the Oklahoma quarterback against Colorado, scrambling for a first down. 
hard hit on that very hard carpet. Oh, his head on the turf there. Uh, ABC reporting as a concussion, airlifted to the hospital, but he is conscious. Wow. He had a brilliant game last week, especially on the ground. And we'll keep you updated on that uh, following our game and prior to BYU and Notre Dame, which caps off our triple header today on ESPN. Measurement, first down, Florida State. Virginia coming back and scoring a couple touchdowns. It just goes to, to show you how big that last touchdown was at the end of the half that uh, Marvin put up on that a tremendous scramble, and then they came out and scored again. So, you know, when, when a team can throw the ball like Virginia, you're really never out of a football game. Charlie Ward, first down, Florida State. From the shotgun. Wide open. Andre Cooper. And Cooper takes it out to another Florida State first down. Pickup of 12. It's so simple to sit up here and do it, but Charlie Ward's doing it at field level. Watch, the back is going to come out, and he's going to get double coverage from a couple guys here. This man comes out, and he's going to deal it to the man who's got single coverage to the outside. Double coverage inside, throw it outside. That's as easy as it gets, and he makes it look so easy. Kind of wasting your time when you run the ball. In this offense. Yes, so. There's no doubt the run sets up the pass with this group. The pass sets up to run him. Ward running a little bit here. Oh, that one tips, and did they get it? Looks like he caught it. He had to be close to the ground. P.J. Killian, no. Close. Got hitched the Mark Crisbaum that time, number 93. Thought he had another shot on Charlie Ward, you know. I, I just don't know. that. In Dick Vitale's word, that's a mismatch. Charlie Ward coming out of the pocket against those guys is like Greg Kite trying to cover him, you know. <laughs> oh, he just dropped the ball at yep. the end. It was as close as it could. PJ Randy Killian. Neal tipped it, and P.J. almost had it. Killian had played very little this year. In fact, was in uh, only in the Georgia Tech game. Came in after leading the club in tackles last year. And due to injury, has sat out most of this season. And now another injury on the Virginia side. As Carl Smith is down. Well, we've got a moment. We can remind you a rematch of last year's division finals. The Islanders uh, with the upset. They take on the Pittsburgh Penguins looking for revenge. Some areas will see the LA Kings against the Florida Panthers. That's ESPN National Hockey League night coming up on Tuesday. Carl Smith being helped off. Florida State in the first half had drives of 80 yards, 49, 64, 86, and 66. For four touchdowns and a field goal, they've added a 65-yard touchdown drive this half, this quarter. And now they're on another pretty good-looking drive again with this guy pulling the trigger. Second and 10, Florida State at its own 46-yard line. Today, Virginia has given up twice as much as they normally do. Riley again. That's where Charlie Ward found him last time, and he was able to scoot down the sideline for a touchdown this time. Didn't get the first down quite, but did get into Virginia territory at the 47-yard line. Joe Rowe just took Carl Smith's spot out on that corner, pushed him up. Third down, three to go. With 1.06 to go, third quarter. Ward completes it. Vanover's got a first down. Take it back. It's Omar Ellis at 30, not 80. He talks about Charlie Ward's eyes in the first half. Let's see how he reads this play. Got to look down because you catch the snap of the shotgun. He looks right, reads the coverage, isn't there, refocuses the outside. A lot of quarterbacks will bird dog their first receiver. From his basketball experience, I think he gets used to looking off his throws. Yeah, it used to be Edwards and Dobard. Now it's just guys like Van Over and Knox and McCorby. And this time, Florida State runs and lost about a half yard. Marquette Smith taken down by Ryan Keel and company for Virginia. I've been impressed with Marquette Smith when he ran the ball in the first half. But you kind of wonder on a 
different football team, what type of runner. He was so highly recruited, great uh, stats in high school, what he would be like. Over 6,700 high school rushing yards. Charlie Ward in the open field. Charlie Ward inside the 30. And out of bounds at the 23-yard line. 20-yard <laughs> gallop that time. It's like trying to catch a vapor. Well, this kind of reminds me of me when... <laughs> all right, all right, let me try to reach out. <laughs> Comes out of the pocket here. When he turns on the Jets, now he's as dangerous as any running back in college football right here, and he's smart enough to know I don't need to take punishment this early on this type of a play. It must have been the spikes that were reminiscent <laughs> of you. Here's Marquette Smith on a direct snap. And he got it inside the 20 to the 19. P.J. Gillian made the hit. And the third quarter has come to a close. Virginia trying to make it interesting, but it's still top-ranked Florida State up big, 37-14. Set to start the fourth quarter, 37-14 Florida State in newly expanded Doak Campbell Stadium. 76,600 plus on hand, second largest crowd ever to see a game here. And some new suites going in around Yo, the stadium, Yeah, too. those are the luxury suites up there. I think you got to <laughs> give 100,000. Well, that's a good seat. She is not our eighth official either. <laughs> Second down and eight. Florida State at the Virginia 20-yard line. Charlie Ward scans the field and in and out of the hands of Omar Ellison. Let's go to Jerry Punch, Doc. Gentlemen, Cavalier Jr. cornerback Carl Smith here on the bench on the sidelines apparently developed cramps in both legs. The managers had him down on the, the trainers had him down on the ground trying to stretch him out for cramping. You stretch, massage, and push fluids, which is exactly what he's doing here on the Virginia sideline. Back upstairs. Brings up a third down. And eight to go. Florida State, seven of 11 in the third down conversion this afternoon. Somebody better keep an eye on Charlie Ward in this situation. Fires it, complete forward progress, maybe to the 16-yard line to Kes McCorby, but not enough for the first down. Joe Crocker stayed over there with him, made the tackle. I think they probably will go for the field goal just to put a little pressure on their kicker. If they have to come through against a Notre Dame or something, this will really put the game a little further out of reach. I, I understand it's a big score, but at 23, this would took it to a 26-point game and make more than three scores. Exactly. Bentley has missed today from 46. He has connected from 23. Now he's got a 33-yard attempt here. And snuck it through the left upright. Yeah. Coach Wells says that could have helped us if he'd have missed that. It didn't miss. It's 40-14. Florida State's last drive, 60 yards, 11 plays. They cap it with Bentley's field goal to put them up 40 to 14. Florida State trying to go to 7 and 0. Last year they clinched the ACC title with a Halloween win over the same Virginia team, 13 to 3. This would put them 5 and 0 in the ACC, and for all practical purposes, that'll be all she wrote for the ACC championship again in '93. They've already beaten North Carolina, and the other teams that are in the top, the upper echelon, if you will, of the Atlantic Coast Conference. Washington with the nine-yard line, swarmed under as he hit the 20. <laughs> We talked to Rick Lance, defensive coordinator for Virginia. He said one of the keys was trying to limit the yards after the catch for the Florida State receivers. You can see they've already run for 155 yards after the catch. They had 182 yards in the air. That means 337 total yards throwing the ball. That's a lot of yards after the catch. And remember, Virginia came in only yielding 167 a game. Willis wide open down the sideline. And to the 45-yard line goes Tyrone Davis, who has a touchdown catch and now has a 35-yard reception. Devin Bush made the tackle. Virginia, no, 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 Virginia. Virginia has found the way to move the ball against Florida State. 
move your quarterback a little bit, throw to your backs, get to your ball to your tight end. Don't challenge the corners too many times in this football field. Try to take advantage of the linebackers and the aggressiveness from their strong safeties and free safeties. Simeon Willis warming up. His stats improving dramatically. And Virginia's chances to put more points up improving with Kevin Brooks, who goes down close to a first down. Sean Hamlet made the tackle. Michigan State and Ohio State tied up in that football game. Mm -hmm. Wow. Another miss in Louisville. Another shootout going on involving the Cardinals. Washington State pulling a little bit of a surprise. Kansas State gave Nebraska all it wanted today before the Cornhuskers prevailed. And, and with Gundy going down, you know, you, you might look at the possibility of Nebraska coming into that Orange Bowl on the feet of him. Guess who they draw? Yeah, this group of Garnet Gold. First down on the sneak inside the 35-yard line. Good news is you're going to a major bowl game. The bad yeah. news is you're going to play Florida State. <laughs> <laughs> Virginia to the 34-yard line as we moved under 13 minutes. 40 to 14. Seminoles in front. Charlie Ward, three touchdown passes on the day. Mixed it up well. He's gone to a number of different receivers. And he had an 18-yard touchdown run of his own that was a piece of art. Again, Kevin Brooks open in the flat inside the 30. Henry Crockett made the tackle. There are some backup people on the field for Florida State defensively, but not that many that uh, you would think Virginia could move it up and down the field on. Still many of the frontline players out there. Florida State came in with a number one defense in the ACC. Virginia was number two, and they were number one and number two in virtually every category in both offense and defense. North Carolina was mixed in there in a total offense category as number two, but other than that, these two teams had all the stats in the Atlantic Coast Conference going their way entering this game. On second and five, Brooks doesn't get anything. Eric Smith made the first hit. Smith's done a nice job, the junior out of Live Oak, Florida, filling in for Derek Brooks today. 43 laying there at the bottom of the pile. Let's go to Jerry. Gentlemen, the news gets from bad to worse for the Virginia Cavaliers. Senior co-captain Greg McClellan is on the sideline, has taken the pads off, has a blue jacket on. He has a fractured clavicle. That's a broken collarbone. The second team All-American probably out for the remainder of the year. Back upstairs. That's a tough one for Virginia's defense. Third down and six. Willis throwing it out for Davis. Was that intercepted? Corey Sawyer. What a catch. <laughs> Look who's down there congratulating him, too. Derek Brooks was sprinting down the field to get him without the uniform. The big one without the uniform on, without the shoulder pads on. What a catch. You said it. Sawyer just accelerated when this ball went in the air. I thought he had the guy open or at least an incomplete pass to the sideline. But over the shoulder, you usually don't find defensive backs that can catch a football like that. Knocked down five passes up until that one, his third interception of the season. Willis was hoping he didn't have it, but he did. And now guys like Terrell Buckley and that group on the sideline won't be able to give him any grief because he's had quite a game again. Cannell in at quarterback, and he hit Billy Glenn as tight end. But it ricocheted off incomplete. Eddie Cannell in there at the controls right now. 11-12 remaining. And Charlie Ward may be all done for the day. We've said that more than once, but <laughs> this time you would think that's the case. And as you take a look at the final numbers, you just have to wonder if when Charlie Ward looks in the mirror to shave in the morning, he doesn't see a bronze statue throwing a stiff arm looking back. Huh? Well, all the precincts are in, and he, he's going to win. <laughs> I think they can put her on ice and send it to Tallahassee. Canal, three pass. Clarence Williams. And you hear the chant of, it's not a boo, it's a poo. Poo bear. <laughs> Consider the number one football uh, fullback prospect in the country. And with plays like this in high school, that's the reason. Six foot one, 250 pound true freshman. Pooh Bear Williams turns it up, and they even announced the game by Pooh Bear. <laughs> First down for Pooh Bear. There he is, Crescent City, Florida. A 
for 1,700 yards and 25 touchdowns rushing last year and over 5,000 in his high school career. Warwick Dunn, another true freshman out of Baton Rouge, off the left side. Yeah, these guys aren't set up for the future, are they? No, no. no, no. As we, we, we talked many times, you got their first unit out. Uh, problem is, all the second unit guys you tried to recruit and couldn't get. <laughs> That's right. And they're fresh and they're hungry. <laughs> and they want to play. Second down nine. We've got ten minutes, ten seconds left in the football game. And Florida State leads Virginia 40-14. Goodell on play action. Out the flat. Flags are down into the 35. We haven't had a holding call all day, have we? They're moving too fast. <laughs> Officials aren't used to this tempo either. I really think Virginia would have played a much better football game, good call, Brent, if they had played one uh, opponent that was a little bit more of this caliber of football game. You could see after the first half, they they've become yep. more accustomed to it and uh, were able to adapt their game and, and, and just get more of a feeling of how to play. I don't think you're going to see a, a full holding, offense, penalty enforcement, spot of the foul, repeat the back. Let's go to Mike Tirico, Mike. What a finish to the Alabama-Tennessee game. Alabama unable to move the ball all day. Drives the ball down the field with no timeouts. Barker the touchdown. The lead is to David Palmer, a quarterback, takes the handoff into the end zone, or the snap, I should say. Another kid that's something else to watch. And we'll continue to watch that score. Gary, you talked, though, to finish your thought about Virginia making the adjustments. Yeah, in, in the second half of this game, you know, they, they've been able to, to, they're leading 14 to 10. I don't think that's a lot great consolation for them because uh, obviously Florida State has lost their edge. But looking into their future of their schedule, I don't see a fold for this football team. I think they'll get better because of this football game. They've got some tough ACC games left, including North Carolina will be their next opponent next week. Uh, North Carolina put it on Georgia Tech today. Third and long. Florida State chooses to run it. Talking about Virginia's schedule. They got Coach Brown's Tar Heels next week. And then at NC State, Wake Forest, who upset Clemson today. And uh, Clemson and, and Virginia Tech to finish things out. Last year, the Cavaliers started 5-0, but then finished 7-4. and 4-4 four and four in the conference, and for the first time in four years, didn't go to a bowl game. Sean Liss. Fair catch, takes it at the 35-yard line. 48-yard kick, and it'll be Virginia on offense when we come back. They trail by 26. Florida State number one, leading 15th-ranked Virginia 40-14 to with 8.31 left to go in the game. BYU and Notre Dame will be next. And with the news on the Alabama-Tennessee tie, Notre Dame will go into that game basically ranked number two in the country against the past happy Cougars Charles Way back to the line of scrimmage that's about it Florida State schedule of course is always tough one and uh, no difference this year they will end up playing seven teams that were in bowls last year they've already beaten some of them along the way and they've got some, some big obstacles left second down 10 Zinion Willis will take off with this one Florida State in hot pursuit he has a nice job and really took a shot at about the 41 yard line from Byron Capers you talk about Florida State as we take a look at that final, Tennessee and Alabama. So Alabama's long winning streak comes to an end, and that one might end up the same way, too. That's a surprise. Michigan State playing much better football than a lot of people had given them credit for. And, uh, Jim Miller, their quarterback, must be playing good football for them. Third down at five with seven minutes and five seconds left in the ball game. Virginia trying to... I think 
trying to prepare themselves for the rest of their season, basically. And a timeout taken by the Cavaliers. Willis will head to the Virginia sideline with 6.59 left. Florida State schedule still has Notre Dame ahead November 13th. And that's the one we talked with Bobby Bowden before the game about. Wake Forest, Maryland, a couple of ACC matchups first. And at Notre Dame, at Notre Dame, that will be a, a huge game if everything stays status quo. Then North Carolina State and at Florida against the Gators, who are smart today after losing to Auburn. And then you top that off with a, a major bowl game against, uh, as they try at that point, to match number one against number two, if it's possible. Kind of got a kick when we came in here yesterday to talk to the coaches to find out what they were going to do in the football game. They wanted to know from me, playing up north all those years in Cleveland, what's it like to play in cold weather? How do you keep your hands warm? Right. Maybe the players weren't looking ahead, but I know the staff and everybody else was thinking about that Notre Dame game because yeah. they want to know, how do you play in cold weather? How do we keep our guys prepared? Florida State, 10 games each season against the ACC opponents, and they've got Miami and Florida, their in-state rivals, and that leaves just one wild card, and then you end up with somebody like Notre Dame. Notre Dame will go off the schedule, though. Southern Mississippi will come back in. That could help the cause a little bit, but it's always murderer's row for this team. That's how Bobby Bowden built this program over the course of uh, the last 18 years by playing an independent schedule and, and beating a lot of those kind of teams to get in the spotlight. Now he's in a conference and definitely in the spotlight. Let's go to Jerry. Gentlemen, each year the College Football Association recognizes member institutions that graduate a minimum of 70% of their scholarship football players and awards one school with the highest graduation rate under the leadership of George Wells. The Virginia Cavaliers have been recognized each of his 12 years and twice have been given the number one achievement award for graduation. So they complete the pass. Not only is he building a great football team, guys, he's doing it with outstanding student athletes. Yeah, they're smart, but they're going to be smarting when this one's over. 40 yeah. or 14. First team defense is coming in, too. They've seen enough yardage. They do not want to give up any more points. They're 14 points is a lot of scoring against this defense this year. Virginia probably does have more psychology majors than any other team in the country, <laughs> I noticed. Duke's got a few. Second down nine at the 48. down with 546 remaining in the ball game. Hey, you mentioned about psychology majors, uh, Brad. Uh, the fellow we talked to earlier in the day, Terry Kirby, graduated in three and a half years and seven semesters. I guess what his major was? Psychology, but uh, he doesn't need it right now. He's uh, starting for the Dolphins in the NFL. That's right. Jim yes, Knight for the call. You wonder if uh, Jerry's trying to make some context to hire him to, to his uh, <laughs> business down here. You know, it's, uh, he checks out all the doctors in the, on, on both sides, I know. So the personal foul all the way back to the 40-yard line. Third down of 21 upcoming. Go ahead, Brad. You can make this call. Third and 21. Yeah, this is the ones they always let the quarterback call. <laughs> I guess I'd throw to Tyrone Davis. <laughs> but he's he's matched up with Corey Sawyer up at the top of your screen. Maybe I wouldn't. Willis has to scramble around. And in and out of the hands. Intended across the middle. Nice coverage by Horner out there on the tight end. Bob Neely. Horner's done a nice job playing an inside linebacker spot. Has seen a lot of times. Senior out of Miami. Plays a lot in the nickel situation for the Florida State defense, and they have a package where they can put a lot of pressure on a quarterback because of their confidence and their cover people. Sawyer with a great interception. Drops back, punt return formation. And he'll take the safe fair catch at the 24-yard line. 5-16 left in the ball game in Tallahassee, and the Florida State Seminoles in front, 40-14. being along. 
one of the few internally lit airships currently in use around the world. Blockbuster video blimp based in Orlando, Florida. And with us in Tallahassee to help bring those great shots from above Doak Campbell Stadium, where Florida State leads 40-14. Defensively by Joe Rowe, Philip Riley, the intended receiver. Joe, just a freshman out of Emporia, Virginia, broke that one up at the last second. Right, Carl Smith, we talked about, he's out of the football game. Ball was thrown a little late. Uh, Riley could just outrun this throw. You can see him, he has to throw a, a slow down for the ball, and Rowe is able to watch the ball and get his hand on it. Danny Cannell at the controls. Charlie Ward's day done with over 300 yards, three touchdowns passing, and a score on the ground as well. Clarence Williams, Pooh Bear, gets good yardage, close to a first down. We go to Dr. Punch, Jerry. Gentlemen, contrary to popular belief, football officials don't just ride a bus into town, grab a whistle, and go to work. They are successful businessmen and professionals who put a lot of years into their avocation. Take today's Atlantic Coast Conference official crew. There are two school teachers, two manufacturers reps, two insurance agents, one doctor, and a bank president. Combined, they have 102 years of experience, led by Jimmy Knight, the referee, a decorated war veteran. Back upstairs. Jimmy's a good man. Williams blasts his way out to a first down. Hubert to the 48 yard line. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Well, he's only got three more years of eligibility, uh -oh. but he'll be out of here too, you know. Well, I'll tell you, interesting, when Charlie Ward leaves this offense next year, will they stay with the fast break offense? I don't think so. I think with type of players like they have in the running backs and Williams, I think you'll see Cannell run a little bit more of the I formation in the future. Marquette Smith. Another one of the youngsters on this team gets it into Virginia territory. Tamarick took one 86 yards in the opening quarter. Thanks. Hey, uh, Pooh Bear can block too, Brad. Check out this one. Comes off, gets one block, runs over one man. That was Hicks. Now he keeps going, gets oh, another oh, guy, oh, a little oh. bit of effort. You just run over. That's the blocking assignment he had right there. Pooh Bear, you run over the outside linebacker and go get the free safety. <laughs> Second down and five. Pooh Bear, the up man in the eye now. Behind Cadell. He'll take the same guy block and try to get the first down, but a flag down on this one. <laughs> Offside, Virginia. Gary, while we got three minutes and 25 seconds talking about Charlie Ward, we touched on it uh, earlier in the first half and just kind of uh, s swept over the mention of about his ability to play in the National Football League. Now you had a chance to see him for three quarters. Uh, I have to admit, uh, I, I had my doubts coming into this season because I saw him maybe at his worst last year against Georgia Tech. I wondered if he wasn't a type of guy who was just scrambling around and making plays. But watching him up close and watching how he delivers the ball and the accuracy of his throws, I don't have any doubt he's a big-time player. And now, you know, he does make plays like a Roger Stovak, a fast Roger Stovak, by the way. That's right. But he reminds me the way he throws the ball of Warren Moon. He just has a rock. First down. Done. Got a couple. Virginia still tagging people on defense. Neal and Barrier, another true freshman, make the stop. And of course, over the years, there have been a lot of people in the uh, Heisman hunt that have played for Florida State. Ron Simmons, Greg Allen, Dion, and Casey Weldon, Buckley, and Jones, and Charlie Ward finished sixth a year ago. And if there's not a number one next to <laughs> that guy's name when this one's all over, I'll be a little bit surprised. Well, and I, I really thought they had the best football player in college football last year, too, Marvin Jones. And if it would go to anybody but a skilled player, uh, he should have won last year. Williams to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. As we're down under two and a half minutes, Ryan Keel made the tackle. And it brings up second down and eight. Beg your pardon, third down and eight. Just outside the 41-yard line. Simeon Willis, you'll see a lot of him over the next couple of years, too, as he has uh, upped his totals to 15 touchdown passes on the season. His percentage was hurt a little bit today in yards gained, but he had a fine third quarter and uh, 
what he's played in the fourth quarter. Clyde Allen gets this completion. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Almost three to go. Fans want Bobby Bowden to go for this. There's really no reason to punt the football this time. You've got your backups in the football game. You might as well let them get some experience. If uh, Charlie Ward did go down, you want Cannell to have the experience to be able to step in there and play. At this point, it's not rubbing it in. Fourth down and two. What are you getting, the Pooh Bear? That, that probably would work. <laughs> <laughs> Just outside the 35. Gee, boy. I'll tell you, I, I think the uh, fast break shotgun offense is over after this year. You can't take that man out of the football game. He's just too impressive. And remember, he's filling in for William Floyd, the junior, who at 245 had a big day. But Clarence Poubert, Williams, four carries, 32 yards, including a first down run there. Give him about six or seven more. This one winds down at Florida State. Bobby Bowden will move into a tie for sixth place on the all-time win list with Bo Beckler. He will also basically win the Atlantic Coast Conference Championship here in a few minutes. And Virginia can only look up at the scoreboard and see that they are 26 down to one serious football team. Yeah, they, they played with a lot of pride in the second half, though, and you got to give them a lot of credit for it. They knew they were overmatched, and they hung in there and fought all the way. Get Smith outside. You know, uh, we always used to talk about it in our games, too. Anybody can play when you're ahead or when the game is even. The real players play when you're behind the game's over. And I'm sure Bobby Bowden will tell George Welsh that. A couple of old friends from way back when they were assistant coaches at West Virginia and Penn State, respectively. But this one goes to Bobby Bowden. And still, number one is number one with a 7-0 win. For Jerry Punch and Gary Danielson, I'm Brad Nessler for our entire ESPN crew saying so long from Tallahassee, Florida. 40-14, to 14, Florida State rolls over Virginia. College football scoreboard show is coming up next. and the third-ranked Irish are an upset alert tonight in Provo, Utah. Notre Dame and BYU coming up at the bottom of the hour. In the meantime, welcome to Shake Up Saturday. Be careful, Lou Holtz. Sorry, it's been a very eventful day in college football. I'm Chris Fowler along with Lee Corso and Craig James. By far the most interesting afternoon of football all season long. Third Saturday of October always means Tennessee and Alabama. In recent years, it has always meant an Alabama victory over Tennessee. Could the Volunteers finally snap that seven-game losing streak? And the Bama 28-game winning streak. First quarter, second and eight play. He's Schuler in the shotgun to Craig Faulkner. 7-3 ball. Schuler breaks the school record for touchdown passes in a season right there. Then Tarrant Lynch gets the handoff, fumbles the ball to Ron Jenkins, picks it up, puts the balls in good field position. Tennessee drives down to the two. And Schuler to James Stewart. This is the kind of plays Tennessee has made in recent years against Alabama. They had the momentum, they gave it back. Alabama ball, driving, down eight. Parker to Palmer, the great pass, 22 yards. Stallings team knows his team can only come out with a tie at this point. Parker on fourth and 10 at the 18. Hits Kevin Lee. He gets it down to the one foot line. Next play, Parker dives into the end zone. 17-15 balls, they go for two in the tie, and David Palmer in at quarterback. Full house and Barker watching as Palmer takes it around right end into the end zone. They convert it, 17-17. It feels a lot more like a loss for the Volunteers. They had the game in their grasp, an 80-yard, 11-play drive. It is 17-17. Meanwhile, a little farther south, the state of Alabama, Auburn taking on Florida. 10 zip Gators and Calvin Jackson. Picks off Danny Warfel. They're not going to get him 96 yards later. 10-7 Gators. That play really sparking Auburn. Later in the second quarter, Tigers at a 14-13 lead. Eric Rett takes the handoff from Warfel. Nothing but green grass in front of him. 2014 Gators. It was 28-27 Tigers in the fourth quarter. Frank Sanders on the reverse. 
gets into the end zone, 35-27, Tigers. Auburn, tied at 35, Scott Etheridge in the fog, in the drizzle, knocks it through from 41 yards, Auburn wins it, 38-35, Coach Bowden's Tigers, the only team in the SEC with an unblemished record, Auburn defense played well, Coach Bowden celebrated. I can't ever say if we're going to come back and win a game. I always believe we're going to come back and win even when we lose. Always, I've been in too many that I've been behind and come back and won, behind and come back and got close and lost and, and, and never have them. Every single time I honestly believe we're going to win the game. So unbeaten Alabama and Florida nicked up. Could John Cooper's Buckeyes escape against Michigan State? Brett Powers, briefly in at quarterback, hitting Joey Galloway, who had a big ball game. 64-yard strike, 14-3 Buckeyes. Three touchdowns, get in the end zone. Three touchdowns for Galloway. Fourth quarter, 21-13 Buckeyes. When Jim Miller looks for his fullback, Scott Green, 38 yards as he gets it across. The two-point conversion made it 21 apiece. Fourth quarter, just over a minute remaining. That's Raymond Harris from six yards out. Breaks the tie, and the Buckeyes do remain unbeaten. 28-21 Galloway, the monster ball game, 10 catches, 195 yards. Washington, UCLA, first quarter, the Bruins were down 15-0. When Wayne Cook hits J.J. Stokes on a quick slant, J.J. Stokes has been on fire like very few guys in the history of college football within a three-game period. 95-yard touchdown in the third quarter. Stokes, again. A 22-yard touchdown. UCLA comes all the way back to lead it 20 to 18. Stokes, one more time. A little quick slant, the nifty inside move. Four touchdowns on the day for J.J. Stokes. Ten in the last 15 quarters as the Bruins win their fourth in a row after losing their first two ball games. They still have the one loss in the Pac-10, though. Louisville struggled all day long against Southern Miss. They now have come back and taken a one-point lead midway in the fourth quarter. Washington State is hammering Cal. The Bears apparently have not recovered from that emotional loss to Washington in the final seconds. And Southern Cal taking on the Beavers of Oregon State early in the second quarter. It's the Trojans up 6-0. I think we have to start, Lee, with the game in Birmingham. It may not feel like a win for Alabama, but it's cer certainly a lot better feeling than Tennessee has. Well, you've got to give Alabama a lot of credit. Jay Barker comes back in that fourth quarter. David Palmer runs and catches the ball and goes. He Shooter, Alabama's defense did something I didn't think was possible. He Shooter hit 15 passes in the first half and zero in the second half. That's how they caught him. But watch out, Alabama. You got Ole Miss at Oxford next week. Not much time to celebrate. Yeah, you know, as you all have said, I think it really became apparent to me. Alabama left this game with a good feeling, pulling off a huge tie. Tennessee had the ball game won. They lost the game, and with that tie, Alabama now still has a chance to stay undefeated and have a chance at the Sugar Bowl and maybe FSU. But really no chance for an unblemished record in the Sugar Bowl because Auburn's the only undefeated team in the SEC. For Tiger fans, it doesn't get much better than this. You beat Florida home, and Alabama's winning streak is over. Uh, Auburn looked great today. They had the running game. They had the passing game. Stan White, they can go undefeated in this season. All they have to do is go to Georgia, beat them, and then stay at home and beat Alabama. They show they can do it. Yeah, they could single-handedly destroy that SEC uh, championship oh. game of unbeaten teams. A lot more to talk about on Shakeup Saturday. Michigan and Penn State in Happy Valley. An historic day for Jopa's boys. Would not end on a happy note in Happy Valley. Shades of the 79 Sugar Bowl. Speaking of Alabama. And a reminder that Notre Dame and BYU are coming up from Provo, our primetime game at the bottom of the hour as Kevin McDougal gets his offensive unit ready is excited for this ball game as he had been for any in a long time. And his Lions led by three when Todd Collins watches as the, the touchdown Mercury Hayes in the end zone, 14-10, Michigan up. Late third quarter, Penn State knocking on the door, but Kerry Collins denied from the one-foot line. Three plays later, first play of the fourth quarter, Kijana Carter stuff, four cracks from the one they couldn't get in, and Penn State committing some costly penalties, some mental errors uncharacteristic of a turnout team. Loses for the first time, and Michigan is back after the humiliation of a week ago against Michigan State. Wisconsin and Purdue. Badgers and White, 14 up already when Daryl Bevel tosses it to Roe. Fletcher takes it in. The extra point good. Badgers are rolling 21-0 in West Lafayette. Jim Coletto, problems with his staff in the off week and problems with every facet of Purdue's game today. Third quarter, 21-0. Bevel fakes. 
19 yards to Mark Montgomery. They made it look very, very easy. Corso wondering, where was this Purdue team when I was trying to win the old Oaken Bucket back at Indiana? 42-28, the game not nearly as close as that score would indicate. And Wisconsin, again, along with Ohio State, the only undefeated teams now in the Big Ten. Iowa and Illinois, the Illini, 49 three winners at Iowa. 21 yards rushing total for the Hawkeyes. Minnesota breaks a 13-game road losing streak, 28-26 over Northwestern. They go to 3-4 and four on the year. In the ACC, Wake Forest and Clemson. You don't want to be Ken Hatfield tonight. Scoreless in the first quarter, Jim Camp takes it around right end. And the Demon Deacons are up 7-0. They've never won in Death Valley. It's 13-10 in the third quarter, and John Leach gets to the corner. Six-yard touchdown. Wake Forest wins it 20-10, the first win in Death Valley since 61. And Jim Caldwell, the first since Dan Devine to win on his first trip there. Congratulations to Coach Caldwell, their only other win this season against Appalachian State. The Ipte crowd will not like that. Marshall led all day long against NC State. The Wolfpack come home and beat the 1AA team 24-17 late. Maryland.